And now, for those most famous words in all of motorsports, I present to you the FedEx Senior Vice President of Marketing, Miss Lori Tucker. It is with great pleasure that I represent over 300,000 FedEx team members worldwide and in support of this most worthy cause, Autism Speaks. I get to say these proud words. Lady and gentlemen, start your engines! How will those engines hold up 400 miles around this uh, one-mile track? Let's bring in the guys, the voices of NASCAR on Fox, Daryl Waltrip, Larry McReynolds, and Mike Chen. Mike, I know you're excited about this place because of the multiple grooves creating exciting racing. A lot of opportunities, uh, Chris, for the drivers to find different lines and where their car works best. But the concrete canyons of Dover, Daryl, uh, there's nowhere this track is flat except pit road. You're in the banking all the time, G-forces, hot, sticky, slimy on the racetrack. This place can wear you out. I'm tired just listening to you talk <laughs> about it, I'll tell you right now. Yeah, just because it's 400 miles, don't think this is a piece of cake. These cars are running faster than they've ever run before. The drivers are working harder than they ever have before. The humidity is as high as we've had any time this year. It's going to be a long, grueling four-hour afternoon. These guys will be exhausted when this race is over with. Larry, the crew has a lot of tuning options on these race cars, but so too does the driver. Well, absolutely, Mike, and I think the heat is the key, and this track is taking rubber very different. Now, Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car who is going for his eighth Dover win, we thought he was going to be on the pole, but he's going to start 24th, got bad loose qualifying. He did not run fast in practice yesterday till he moved his race car up that racetrack. He better move that groove around if he wants to get to the front and get that eighth win. That's right. More than half of Dover's Sprint Cup races have been won from the first four starting positions. Ready to race in the first state on Fox. Field has rolled off pit road. Let's have a look at the Geico starting grid for today's race. Denny Hamlin, full sitter for three of his last five starts. And Martin Truex, the 07 winner here. A pair of two-time Dover winners and teammates on row two, Matt Kenseth and Kyle Busch. Ryan Newman, three Dover wins. Mark Martin has four. Kevin Harvick, runner-up last year, and Brad Keselowski, the winner here last fall. Joey Logano won yesterday. He was top ten in both races last season here. Jamie McMurray has a runner-up finish here. Casey Kane with a win in three seconds this season, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 2001 Dover winner. Kurt Busch, whose last series win came here in fall of 11, and Montoya, who was quick in both practices yesterday. Clint Boyer, top 10 at Dover the last four races. Paul Menard, best Dover finish of seventh. Casey Mears and Carl Edwards, who has the best Dover average finish of all active drivers. Rounding out the top 20, two-time Dover winner Greg Biffle and four-time Dover champion Jeff Gordon. Let's talk to the guy on the pole and see what his thoughts are before the race. Denny Hamlin, DW here. You got a copy, buddy? Yes, sir. Denny, I see you chose the outside uh, for the start of the race. Uh, would you tell the fans at home why? I just think that uh, the momentum off turn two on the first lap is usually uh, better, and it always seems like the, the outside lap restarts better uh, because uh, you're up against the wall, and for whatever reason, it takes off a little better when you do accelerate. So that's the only reason, just trying to keep our track position as long as we can. And uh, I heard this morning that you got up and you had to go uh, have a little adjustment on the back. How's the old back feeling, buddy? Uh, it's getting there. We're, we're getting better. But uh, like anyone with back pain, you, you wake up and you have good days and bad days. Today wasn't that good of a day. So um, it's just getting an adjustment. I feel a little bit, a lot better right now. Uh, but really, we're, we picked the three most grueling races in a row that you can come back from. So once we get past this one, uh, we should be good to go. All right, my friend, good luck today, and uh, if you need a win, this would be a good place to get one. Absolutely. Penny Hamlin will start from the pole. This race is brought to you by Budweiser, the beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, fast finish. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. 
Let's get down to pit road and start with birthday girl who is reporting for two. Krista Vota. Thank you very much. Yes, I can relate to Denny Hamlin about back pain, by the way. For Dale Earnhardt Jr., the 88 team coming up, their worst finish of the year last week. But they are coming in here with a different approach. Even Dale Jr., he personally says he's going to keep an open mind about how he drives the race car, specifically by finding those different lines on the racetrack. For Junior Nation, the only line they care about is the one that goes to victory lane. Steve Burns. Well, Krista, all signs point to success for Matt Ketchup. He's starting in row two. He's a two-time winner here, a three-time winner already this season. But his crew chief, Jason Ratcliffe, told me this morning they had their hands full in the final practice, which was about this same time of day. He was loose on entry, loose on exit. So Matt Yoakum, he may have his hands full early in this race. Steve Martin, Truex Jr., continues to impress. Momentum over the past six races has propelled the 56 team from 25th to ninth in the championship standings, but the biggest item on the agenda is scoring a second career win. Now, the challenge today is going to be the weather. Now, it's beautiful right now. The sun's beating down on the racetrack. The rain is expected tonight after the race, but the cloud cover should come in at about the two-thirds mark. And teams already noticed in final practice when that happened in turns one and two, the race tack racetrack took a big swing as far as character. And they're expecting that to be a big challenge today, Jeff Hammond. Well, Matt, you made the word, use the word challenge. Well, right now I'm in an area where the hot spot in this way for today's race could easily be. That's the end of pit road. Under green flag stop, they've got to come in here at over 100 miles an hour, get it slowed down to 35. You look out, you'll see that orange spot. Well, that's where the orange cone normally is. You've got to be slowed down to 35 miles an hour. If you don't, well, you can get caught speeding or you can wind up in these sand barrels at the end of pit road, which also could end your day. Today, pit road is going to play a big, important role on who wins this race guys all right Jeff run for cover because we're going green next time by it has been hot this weekend in Dover 85 right now over 90 is forecast for today we may not see that but the track temp of 107 indicative of full sun all day long it's 400 laps to create to go 400 miles here Pit road speed is a agonizingly slow looking 35 miles an hour. Yeah, that pit road speed is what gets a lot of drivers in trouble because it's one of the slowest pit road speeds that we have. And you saw a fuel run 70, 80 laps on a tank of Sunoco race fuel. 43 cars came to make the field. So everyone starts, nobody went home. We are ready to race of the Dover Downs Hotel and Casino along the back straightaway. Looks a little like Monaco and Monte Carlo. <laughs> without the swimming pool and the yachts, let's oh, we say. we have the hotel, at least. That's right. Toyota Pace Car heads for pit road. Up in the 24-degree banking, here they come out of turn number four. 28 times, Dover has been won from the front row where Denny Hamlin and Martin Truex bring them down. Boys and girls. It's a four pack off turn two, well out in front of the field. Well, I think that pretty much showed why Denny Hamlin chose that outside. He got that run through one and two and down the back straightaway. He's going to lead this first lap. Yeah, Larry, that's something I think the guys observed here over the last couple of days in the uh, truck series and the nationwide yesterday. That outside on the restart was a hot tip. This sixth generation of NASCAR race car, these new Ford Fusions, Toyota Camrys, and Chevy SS's that debuted in February. Joe Gibbs Racing has been class of the field as they are right now. And that's the 20 going to second spot, Matt Kenseth. Here comes Kyle Busch. And if he get past, gets past Truex, it'll be Joe Gibbs Toyota's 1-2-3. Matt Kenseth has been telling his teammates and all of his friends, circle Dover. That's mine. I own it. I will win, Dover. Mark Martin battling Ryan Newman. That's for fifth place. Martin to the bottom. He's had a lot of success here. Mark, Mark, Martin, has, Mark Martin has had an incredible amount of success here. He owns a record for almost everything. Fastest race, slowest race, eight second place finishes. This place has been really good to Mark through the years. 
Montoya in the 42 passed Kurt Busch in the 78 for 13th. And here's Montoya, Montoya's teammate, Jamie McMurray, trying to take eighth away from series champ Brad Kozlowski. Yeah, Jamie McMurray, he has had speed here all weekend long. That car has been good. They've made some long runs, qualified the top 10. Somewhat backing it up here after the green flag of this race. Yeah, with Brad Kozlowski in his group, got his crew chief back. Paul Wolf's on the pit box today. Paul's a savvy former racer. Watch for that two car to have a good day today. Truex making, uh, breaking up the Gibbs group. His Michael Waltrip Toyota runs third behind Hamlin and Kenseth ahead of Kyle Busch and Mark Martin. All five Toyotas in the top five right now. Six laps in. You know, this place is pretty interesting, Mike, Larry, and you know this, Larry. I've seen cars be junk at the start of a race, get a couple of cautions, get a couple of pit stops on your belt, make some adjustments. I've seen cars go from laps down to being the fastest car on the track here. Kyle Busch got a big runoff turn two that time, but not enough to get past Kenseth. Here's Marcus Ambrose to the inside of Talladega winner David Reagan as they battle back for 31st. Yeah, Marcus Ambrose in the nine, another driver, a lot like Jimmy Johnson that just got so loose qualified in the heat of the day on Friday and started deep in the field. That's how tricky this joint is. You think you got a handle on it? This thing will change in a heartbeat on you and the car will go all the It'll go to like junk and you got to make some big changes. Brad Kozlowski with his crew chief, car chief, lead engineer, and competition director back at the track this week. Here's what Brad had to say just before we started. Good luck, Brad. Calling everybody. Glad to have everybody back together again. It's be hot out here today. Everybody stay hydrated, stay cool, and do our best. 400 miles. Good luck. Thank you, Walt. Yes, sir. Really glad to have everybody back. Thanks, Paul, Brian, Jerry. So we've got a little bit of fun over the last few weeks. Let's have more of them today. Walt Zarnicki, executive VP of uh, Penske. Wishing uh, those fellows well back at the track. Well, that one car, Larry, it, it, Jamie McMurray in the one car. That thing looks pretty racy right now. He was getting by uh, Ryan Newman there underneath him. Ryan making that pass. Car looks fast. Yeah, right now, 10 laps into this race, he's making that one car work right on the bottom. You can see he's almost hugging that black asphalt apron. Wouldn't surprise me a bit to see one of the Ganassi cars in the top five at the end of 400 miles today. Which is something that's only happened once in a long time, and that was Montoya a couple of three weeks ago at Richmond when he got that top five. Matt Kenseth pulled right up to the back bumper of Denny Hamlin and then breathed it a bit. Well, that, I mean, that's his teammate. That's his teammate. But one thing I noticed off the two right there, looked like Matt's car in the wake of the 11 of Denny Hamlin is picking up a little bit of what we call arrow push. Gets uh, Maybe gets the nose out underneath him. He can make that pass. One thing I've been watching Kyle Busch in the 18 is he pulled to the inside of Martin Trex Jr. in the 56. He really, the last time through three and four, moved his car about three lanes up and got that good run off the corner. Kyle Busch drives so much, and I know people are going to get mad at me. He's so, so much like Earnhardt used to drive. He will put that car right up next to you. He will not hit you. He will just worry you and make you think he's going to hit you. Give him the room to get by. Well, it's a movie he's been working on all weekend. He won the truck race going away, led a lot of yesterday's nationwide race. Here, watch out. Just watch how close he gets. And he puts that right front fender right on the left rear quarter panel. And when he's there, you know he's there, and you know you better move out of the way. All I know is Joe Gibbs drivers one, two, three. We've seen this movie a lot this year. They really have a handle on this new sixth generation Sprint Cup car as Denny Hamlin's led every lap so far. Working lap 20 of 400 and Denny Hamlin begins to work race traffic. He's going by uh, Mike Bliss as Kyle Busch jumps into the second spot past his teammate Matt Kenseth. You know what, I don't know a whole lot, but I bet you I can tell you who leads the most laps today. Would it be that guy uh, in that 18 car, Kyle Busch? His car just flies through the middle of the field. At, the, at, at their yellow car. <laughs> that yellow car is coming to the front, buddy, in a hurry. Joe Gibbs racing, one, two, three, Steve Burns. Matt Ketchup has said his car has gotten tight from the center off. He's also asked his team to give him only pertinent radio information, starting to hear some uh, static in his radio headset. For the lead, Kyle Busch to the bottom, and he couldn't get the drive off the corner to pass Denny Hamlin. They are our Toyota top performers. Toyota's on the top five right this moment. Chris 
Kyle Busch. Well, Kyle Busch had said that the issue was his front tires. He said he's on the splitter a little bit, but really it was the front tires that he had the issue with. But then at lap 18, he said, now the car is coming to me. I'm in his pit. I was just standing next to Coach Gibbs, and I think he just took off towards Denny Hamlin's area right now. Well, the biggest thing he's having problems with right now is lap cars out there. They are dealing our leaders a fit right now. And when, when you start this race, you're going to be on really, really low air pressure. The tires are going to be a little soft. So it's going to get on the splitter for a lap or two. Here you go. We got a little battle here for second right now. Looks like Kenseth wants it back. Hard to tell these fellows are teammates the way they are running each other so hard just 23 laps into this race. But that's their job. Their job is not to run second and third to their teammate or anybody else as Kyle Busch becomes the second leader of this race. Going around the outside of Denny Hamlin. He's got good drive off the corner. Thread the needle below Dave Blaney and secure the lead. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're establishing themselves right now. Well, Kyle Busch couldn't make it work on the bottom. He said, I'm going to try the top side of Denny Hamlin in the 11. All right, how about Hamlin, Matt? He's chasing his 23rd career win, but right now, Mike, he's telling Darian Grubb and the guys on the 11th that the car, if anything, is on the tight side. That's the condition he's fighting right now, just early on in this race. Oh, it's got to go through about three changes. When you start, you're a little tight. Then you get a little loose, and then by the end of the run, you get a little tight again. That's just kind of fuel burning off and the balance of the car changing. Let's have a look back for Casey Kane in sixth place. He's the first Chevrolet in line. Keselowski, the first Ford in eighth. And I've been watching Casey Kane's lap times, and he's keeping tempo with the leaders. And Matt, to start 11th, he's trying to crack the top five. Absolutely, Larry Mack. And right now he's working the bottom, but Casey's always the barometer for everybody else when that upper groove is starting to come in. He was running the high side for a while down in turns one and two, but now he's back on the bottom, says the car is a little free from center to exit. He's the best of the Chevys, which means he's the best of Rick Hendrick's four cars. Here's how they're running. And Jimmy Johnson started 24th because the car got away from him on qualifying and has only gained three positions since. You know, I'm watching the car in practice yesterday, I know they posted a fast lap and got them up in the top five at the end of the practice. That car, they worked on that thing the whole time. Not sure they got the car they need right now to be able to contend right uh, for the win. You see our Fox Sports 1 cam is never level. Nine degree banking on the straightaways here, 24 degrees in the corner. Yeah, just watch. I mean, she settles down a little bit, goes a little level, but we're still nine degrees going down the front. And watch how quickly that thing turns up to 24. I mean, she gets up there in a hurry. Now, Johnson got up to 19th place, but he's given two of those positions back midway in this run. Second place, Matt Kenseth on the outside of pole sitter Denny Hamlin. Well, you heard the report that Matt Yoakum gave on Denny Hamlin's 11 car that, it, that it's tight. That in other words, he's turning the steering wheel and the front wheels aren't responding. And I think that's only going to get worse as we're almost halfway through this run if we stay green. Denny Hamlin led the first 23 circuits. Kyle Busch the last seven in Dover. 38 laps complete. Kyle Busch the leader. Here's today's Ford EcoBoost track facts. The first race at Dover, July 1969. The only season Richard Petty ran a Ford. David Pearson won the pole. Petty won the race in a Ford, which has 25 Dover wins in the Sprint Cup Series. The last one being Matt Kenseth in this race two years ago. Danica Patrick has come to pit road. She has had some tough sledding uh, today. She was racing hard for 32nd place. The leader had already gone by, uh, but here comes a lot of traffic. Austin Dillon, the 51, David Stremme and the 30 get together, slide up. Patrick on the bottom in the 10 tries to take advantage. Car doesn't stick. Up the track she comes. Hamlin and Truex want to get by. Nowhere for them to go. And Danica finds there's hardly anywhere to run, and there's nowhere to hide here. Yeah, I mean, th this was absolutely a mess in front of our lead lap drivers right at the front of the pack. They, they, it was a wad. Yeah, he she ends up getting into Stremme pretty hard in the right rear quarter panel here. Yeah, she, she, came, to, she came to pit road, and I'm, I, I'm sure she hopes she had a flat tire, but that car was all over the place. See her making serious contact there with David Stremme. Clear low, clear low. All clear, all clear. 
all clear. Hamlin was almost in a precarious spot, and you see the damage on Stremme's car as the Kurt Busch goes by. Patrick back out on the racetrack, three laps down. Yeah, the busiest guy in Dover for several laps, her spotter, Brandon Manesh, that's for sure. And her. I think she was working the steering wheel and probably that radio button pretty seriously there for a few laps. Kyle Busch out in front of Matt Kenseth now by two and a half seconds. Mark Truex in third, five seconds back of the leader, Matt. Like he faded from second at the start back to fourth, but he's slowly working his way back up toward the front. He said about the last 10 laps or so, the car has gone to the neutral side right now. They're halfway through a fuel run, just taking more data with the sun out like this for the middle to later portions of the race. Fastest car on the track that lap, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 10th, along with Ryan Newman, Jamie McMurray, and the drivers in the front four. Take a ride, Daryl, yeah, around uh, Dover International Speedway. Let's see what Junior is seeing. He's coming down the uh, back straightaway here. Or uh, now that's actually coming off turn four down the front into turn one. Nice low line. The car looks like it's sticking on the bottom. Real nice for him. Back in the throttle. You can see his throttle trace. Gets it up on the up on the straightaway. Gets it wide open. Shoots down that 1,076 foot back straightaway. Right down again the apron right there on the bottom. A little snug, little snug, little close to that wall back in the throttle yeah you could tell he was all the way up on the straightaway before he could even think about going full throttle krista dale earnhardt jr up a couple of positions from where he started this race right now his issue is turn four he's loose under compression and we've talked about how different the sacrifices you have to make if you can rotate the center you know you're going to be uh, loose off so that's the concern he has right now especially in turn four Now, we mentioned Jimmy Johnson, who started 24th, got up to 19th, and now Johnson is 22nd. And that's not, it's only about seven seconds, Daryl, from going a lap down to the leader. Well, here comes, uh, here comes the leader right there. Johnson just now in turn one down there. So, uh, yeah, he's about the length of the back straightaway from going a lap down. But, Larry, I did not like that car in practice yesterday. They practiced over on the right-hand side of their computer here for a while, the monitor got a good lap in at the end of practice, but I didn't feel good about the way that car looked in practice yesterday. And Darrell, they, they have had such a stranglehold on this racetrack, but I think we talked about it at the top of the show, the heat here, the rubber is just going down on this concrete surface, different, and I think it's thrown a lot of teams and their drivers at first. Johnson about a quarter lap away from going a lap down, Steve. And Mike, I just went down to the pits to check, and it's a one-word answer, loose. And Larry, remember, you know, we keep talking about the, this, our 13th race with this new car. We've been to every kind of racetrack. Now they got a notebook built. They hadn't been to Dover. Yeah, you better and this one-mile concrete monster will eat your lunch. Kyle Busch closing in on seven-time Dover winner Jimmy Johnson with 50 laps complete. Kyle Busch continues to lead 58 laps, so let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series. Brought to you by Sprint. Pole sitter Denny Hamlin with the quickest lap here, 152.9 miles per hour. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app and truly unlimited data from Sprint. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. Kyle has lapped all but the first 22 cars. He is catching people, diving inside him, getting up close to him, and just going, get out of my way. Aggravating him, worrying him to death. <laughs> the Joe Gibbs Toyota's running first, second, and fifth right now. Here's Jeff Hamlin. Yeah, Mike, I'm over here in turn two watching the guys come up off of turn two and go down the back straightaway. And right now, all the Joe Gibbs cars look like they're really rolling the center, but more importantly, they look really steady, making a lot of ground up on the exit of the corner. I guess because this 15 6 car and the camera in the rear end and the side force this car brings to this racetrack, they've taken full advantage of it. And oh, by the way, they did have a really successful out into that nationwide race. I think that experience helped them. I know what Kyle Busch's next dot on his radar is, <laughs> that blue 48 car, Jimmy Johnson. I think he's licking his chops right now. He's seen Jimmy up ahead of him. 
Look at this. Joe Gibbs Racing has led almost twice as many laps as any other Sprint Cup team this season. And Kyle Busch coming into this race, he had led 805 laps. And we're just a third of the way through 2013. Would you believe 62 laps into a race at Dover that Jimmy Johnson would be the last car on the lead lap? Well, that's the case right now. No, nope. but in about five more laps, I believe he'll be the first car one lap down. <laughs> Uh, Jamie McMurray ran well early. He's dropping back. He's back to 14th, Krista. Yeah, Mike, and for starting 10th, what is the problem with Jamie McMurray? Well, the start of the race, lap eight, he said he was a little tight. That little tight condition has become a lot tight. He definitely needs his car freed up on this next stop. I, I believe help is on the way. It's getting much cloudier. The sun is not shining on the track quite as bad as it was when we started. The track should cool a little. That's going to help everybody. We're closing in on the window for the first green flag pit stops of the day. Denny Hamlin's led 23 laps. Kyle Busch, 41 in Dover. Jimmy Johnson's been on pit road. So has Carl Edwards and other contenders. Denny Hamlin, the pole sitter, missed the entrance to pit road. And at low speed, will have to come back all the way around to make his stop. Let's look at Hamlin's miscue. Right here, 39. Have all four tires coming out the coming out the orange box in order to make the pit road entrance. And here is leader Kyle Bush coming off the racetrack at lap 72. That's that is so hard to come off the racetrack down on that flat and make that speed limit 35. Krista. Kyle Bush, if he said he had to rank his issues in order, he would say it would be entry first and then center. Expect just a small change. Kate Rogers knows this cloud cover has affected the car. Matt. So Denny Hamlin had a clear entry. Concern going in was the car being free at entry, but actually it's tight from center to exit. Air pressure change to fix it, Steve. Matt, Matt Ketchup at pit stall number 43. He says he needs more front grip, and he says he's tight from the center off. Matt. And Martin Trent Jr., the service already complete for him. His car was a little free going over the bumps. They made an air pressure change to try to give him more rear grip on this next run. Brad Keselowski, your new leader, he is one of just two lead lap cars who have not yet pitted. Ryan Newman is the other, Steve. Juan Pablo Montoya in the 42 had a great starting spot. It's gonna be a four tire change, no other adjustments for Montoya, Matt. And our defending series champion, Brad Keselowski with his core group back this week up on top of the box. He started eighth one here last fall, and Keselowski said much of this past run, the thing that he needed most with even more stability, especially on entry into turns one and turn four. They're going to fix the car on this run with an air pressure change. Also going to clean the grill. They had some concern earlier about some trash on it. The water temperature was a little high, Mike. So you see Ryan Newman also pitting at the same time. That will hand the lead back to Kyle Busch. When pit stops began, Bush's lead over Matt Kenseth was three and a half seconds. After pit stops, same second place car, and the lead is 3.2. Now, the one thing I picked up on, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, we're riding with him. He pitted three laps earlier than Kyle Busch. Remember, before he pitted, he was racing Kyle to stay on the lead lap. Now he's got a decent lead over Kyle Busch about the distance of half the back straightaway. So pitting early paid off for Jimmy Johnson. And it may really pay off, Larry, because anytime your car is not exactly right, if you get on pit road and get four tires and an adjustment, that might be just what you need to stay up there and not get lapped again. Probably the biggest thing he was looking for was that adjustment. Yes, sir. Restarts aside, for me, the most edge of your seat part of this race is when half this field have brand new tires and the other half are trying to squeeze two or three laps out of their worn ones because the closing rate and the, the passing speed differential at that point in the race is huge. We get through it without incident, however. And here's Denny Hamlin, who comes out seventh uh, with a gain of three positions from where he was prior to pit stops. Kyle Busch up three seconds on Matt Kenson, Martin Truex another two back, Casey Kane and Mark Martin, the top five.
Caution is out for debris in turn number two at lap 81. The lucky dog is Tony Stewart. You don't need credit. All you need is errands. He gets back on the lead lap. And uh, with this first caution of the day, let's go to Chris Myers. Jimmy Johnson has won four of the last eight races here, a seven-time winner overall, but uncharted water with a, of a car that's struggling. And we heard him on the radio saying, I got my hands full with this car. His crew chief, Chad Canals, was saying, we really need to tighten up this car. But there's there's more tenseness than we usually hear in those two. Well, we're used to seeing Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson running together at Dover, but it isn't Kyle Lappin, Jimmy. He's great here. That car hasn't been up to speed so far. A cup adjustment, though, and he could be back in this game. Racing fans, if you know something about speed, buckle your seatbelt and play AT&T's fastest driver challenge called Star Star Fast from your mobile phone to predict who will have have the fastest time in today's race brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network AT&T rethink possible and set back upstairs to Daryl Larry and Mike. Thanks Chris getting ready to restart after the first nine drivers stayed on track 10th on back pitted now let's update Denny Hamlin Hamlin was running fifth when he missed the entrance to pit road that put him back to 10th so he came into the pits 10th he came out seventh on his green flag stop so he did gain three spots on the stop but he had lost five on the racetrack yeah but he missed it good Mike he did not really get slowed down that much realized he wasn't going to hit pit road and really didn't lose a lot of time even though it did throw him off a little bit so he will restart seventh of the nine drivers who did not stop yeah and of those ten that pitted it was kind of split decision half of them changed four tires half of them just rights Jamie McMurray and Kevin Harvick are the first of the cars that did stop under this first caution of the day. Just saw the five car Casey and Kane experience this same thing all last week in Charlotte. Really slow on that restart. Truex slid up the hill. Got a tough restart there. He and Matt Kenseth, though. That was a little close there as Kyle Busch takes off. Well, I think the problem, Matt Kenseth in the 20 just didn't get through one and two, and Truex had nowhere to go and just about hit him in the back. Truex, the blue car. Well, you see right Whoa. there. Yeah, the 18 of Kyle Busch kind of sucked the back of the 20 of Matt Kenseth around. He had to get out of the gas a little bit. Good driving by Martin Truex in that 56. You hear out of the throttle. What back? Could have been big. Jamie McMurray, the first car out of the pits with four with new tires, and here he comes, car number one. Well, we, we've seen all weekend long in all the other races that at least two right side tires was not a bad way to go on a pit stop. Up front, two of the Gibbs Toyotas tied together. Kyle Busch, Matt Kenseth. Wide in the back, Eric Almarola has served a penalty for too fast entering pit road. And he's got new tires. He's trying to fly up through. Almarola says this is his best track. He won here in the truck series in 2010. His crew chief Todd Parrott won this race with Dale Jarrett back in 98. And we have so many drivers that's one lap down, 10 of them fighting to get that free pass to be the, get that lap back. Right now it's Ricky Stenhouse in the lucky dog position as Clint Boyer and Jeff Gordon avoid contact coming up off the corner. And there's Al Marola in that blue car coming hard and Jimmy Johnson against teammate, one time mentor, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, you watch that 48 car. We've seen this act before, Larry. In trouble early, make a couple of big changes to that car and here he, uh, he'll be back up there fighting for the lead. Now, as Larry explained, Johnson is back on the lead lap because he made his green flag pit stops three laps before the leader and took advantage of those new tires to get back on track out in front of Kyle Busch. And then he came back in again on that call. She got four more tires. I'm sure more adjustment to his 48 car. When you have a great driver that can give you the kind of feedback Jimmy Johnson can give Chad Canals, you can fix your race car. You have tools. You have all kind of things that you can do to that car once you know what the problems are. Kyle Busch led 302 laps here last fall of the 400. But the race became a fuel mileage marathon in the closing stages. He had to pit for fuel and wound up seventh. And when I say tools, I mean, like, Chad Knauss has a huge toolbox. He's got a lot of different things in that toolbox he can use to fix his car. Not wrenches. I'm talking about spring rubbers, 
shock, anything you can think of, that got it. You know what I think his biggest go-to tool is, though? That cat behind the wheel of that race car, Jimmy Johnson. Keeps him pretty pumped up, and they trust each other. Huge amount of trust. Joey Logano in the 22, a winner yesterday. Second straight win here in the Nationwide Series, and Kurt Busch about to gobble him up because Busch in 14, closing fast in that black Chevrolet. Woohoo! That's a thrill ride. That's a little fish tail up off the corner there. One thing you'll never question is Kurt Busch giving you 100% behind the wheel of that 78 car. And Joey Logano right in front of him loves this track. He had two top fives all of last year. He was not driving this car, but the 22 had two top fives all of last year. Together, they've had two top five. He has four top fives already. Boy, he did it again, Larry. I mean, that thing is really jumping sideways off of the corners here, off two and four. But you know what? Todd Barrier, the crew chief on that 78, the driver like Kurt Busch, they'll get that thing tightened up. Yeah, you just can't keep doing that, Darrell, because you'll eventually just burn the right rear tire off of it. No grip then. Got to slow down to fix it right now, but uh, then let the crew work on it. Don't, don't do anything. Let the crew help you. Kurt Busch's last win came right here in October of 2011. We talked about Jimmy Johnson in that 48 car moving the groove around. We saw him that time through one and two go up about a lane and a half to two lanes. He he's restarted take, 18th and he's picked up three. And he took advantage of Kurt Busch in that 78 car washed up the racetrack, but Kurt gets that good run off the corner. Yeah, Kurt Busch just needs to back it down just a little bit right here. Hang on to the car. Don't wreck the car. And when another caution comes or another pit stop comes, let his team help him fix the car. Jimmy Johnson is the race's biggest mover so far, up nine spots, as is Josh Wise in the front row motorsports number 35. See Casey Kane right there. He's moved up seven spots in his five car right now, running in the fourth position. Looking at Martin Truex Jr. at 56 for third. Matt? Kane on a roll, absolutely, Mike. Started the race 11. Now they pitted back on lap 73. And Casey said that the car was really good comfort wise. If anything, it's a little bit tight, but he could definitely feel he had great grip through the black sections in the corner. That's why he's been running a little closer down to the bottom than normally he would. Jamie McMurray just passed Brad Keselowski for six. Jeff Gordon goes to work on Kurt Busch. Jimmy Johnson has passed Joey Logano for 13. A lot of action all the way around the Monster Mile. Jeff Gordon makes the pass as Kyle Busch leads teammate Matt Kenseth by seven tenths of a second. The monsters on this car are nice. These are nice monsters. These are good monsters. <laughs> They're yeah. good guys. Right. Miles now, the monster, not so much. Now, Miles, on the other hand, maybe not. Jimmy's running 12th. He is one of 15 cars, 20 cars, excuse me, on the lead lap, including Tony Stewart, who was the free pass car, a car on the first caution, as Kyle Busch now leads Matt Kenseth by eight tenths of a second. Then Truex, Kane, and McMurray, and here are Chip Ganassi's cars. Montoya with top tens in two of his last four starts. That's as many as he had in his prior 52 starts, and McMurray running well. Krista? And they are one of the cars that came in under that caution on lap 81, and they took just two right side tires. Six laps later, he set his car and got really tight. But it looks like it's coming around now, Steve. And his teammate, Juan Pablo Montoya, Krista, they made an air pressure adjustment in the right rear tire, and that really made that 42 car come to life. Yeah, I think that, that what's helping all these guys, uh, particularly uh, some of the guys that made the right adjustments is the sun is no longer do we have sun on this track track and you see that black really black groove around here when the sun goes away that gets a little bit more grip to it yes sir if the sun shining on it, it's a little slick and slimy but when the sun goes away that tightens up high cloud cover but not storm clouds no threat of rain right now but we're riding with Kevin Harvick. Look right there and all that black. That's what Daryl's talking about. That's just, this is a concrete surface. And unlike an asphalt surface, 
the, the rubber off the tires, it doesn't go down into it. It just kind of lays on top of it. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I like to call it, I think it's like Teflon. You know, it just lays on top of there and it slides around a little bit. When it cools off, though, it gets a little sticky. I like that. Well, Harvick just slid into the top 10, getting past our pole sitter, Denny Hamlin, Matt. Mike, Kevin Harvick's running position, but more like a heart monitor, much of the race coming and going as the cloud cover comes in and out. Right now, Kevin says, although the car earlier was more on the free side and he had to pedal it, now in the cloud cover, the car is absolutely plowing. That's the other thing that goes along with this weather change. This is the first time we've had weather like this here this weekend. We've not seen a cloud. All we have seen is the sun beating down on this concrete surface. Definitely changes the way these cars are driving. That red car is the first Chevrolet in the race. Jamie McMurray right in front of Casey Kane. They are running fourth and fifth behind three Toyotas. Ahead of Mark Martin's Toyota, Brad Keselowski is the first Ford. He is in the seventh spot. There's a look at Mark Martin. 17th on the all-time win list with 40. 7th on the all-time pole list with 56. And the only fellas ahead of him, Hall of Fame. Outside, outside. You know what, Denny Hamlin, the 11, is saying to his crew chief, Darren Grove, I thought you said that 48 was junk today. He just went by me. And here comes Clint Boyer, racing Jeff Gordon for 15th. 15th is where Boyer started the day. Now, Clint Boyer, we're right, riding with him right now, one of the drivers, when he came to pit road, he took four fresh tires. Jeff Gordon back there in that 24 went with just two right sides. So I think this is where that really makes a difference. Right now, Jimmy Johnson in the 48, he's trying to crack the top 10. He will crack the top 10. Just drives by That's Harvick. That's got to be a bad thing. Uh, was that Earl Barbin, Jimmy Spotter? You know, on we, the radio? we never know what's going on, you know, with the spotters and the crew chiefs. Yeah. I'm thinking Kevin Harvick may have had some derogatory thing to say about Jimmy Johnson early in the race, and maybe not. There are the spotters up on the roof, and yeah, there's a lot of good nature gripping yeah. that goes on on the radio channel. Because Jimmy, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just like when he went by Denny Hamlin there a minute ago. Everybody thought that, uh, that the 48 and Jimmy Johnson was in trouble today. I mean, he was on the verge of going a lap down. But is there anybody better in this sport at making the car better as the race goes along? Then Chad can out. Got that and magic one. Yep. Gets that magic one out and weighs it over that car and away it goes. Kyle Bush is dominating like he did here last fall. He's led 93 of 119 laps. Uh, led the most laps yesterday. But on the last pit stop of yesterday's nationwide race, it was Kyle that made the call for four tires and he couldn't get back up past seventh. He thought he had a sure winner when he left pit road. It was not to be. He made the commitment today just to drive that race car. Caution's out for the second time today. Debris low on the racing surface in turn number three. The lead lap car has been about 40 year, uh, laps since they've been on pit road. Steve Burns. And Matt Kenta says that his race car has loosened up a little bit, Mike, but Jason Ratcliffe says four tires, but no other adjustments on the 20 car. Krista? Steve, there will be a slight adjustment made for Kyle Busch's number 18. He said it was about, uh, maybe about 20 laps ago that his car started to go into a four-wheel slide. So you see the wrench going in the back. Also for Jamie McMurray, too loose, Matt. Upper left, Martin Trips Jr. said the car was a little snug on edge at the beginning of the run. And also the front splitter was touching the bottom, creating some upset in the front as well. But he just said the car absolutely needs to turn better. Air pressure change up front. There's our FedEx race off pit road. The two Gibbs cars exit side by side. Matt Kenseth had a little edge over Kyle Busch, picking up two spots. Toya picked up three. Close. Now they were this close all the way down pit road, Darrell. Yes, sir. They came out. 20 car actually got by the 18 a little bit 
after, right after 18 came out of the pit box, they got side by side, and that was how close it was on pit road. I, I think what helped Matt Kenseth, yeah, he doesn't have that last pit box leaving, but he has that very first one coming in. He gets his work done. All he has to focus on then is pit road speed and getting off pit road. Played the timing lines pretty good, too. And since the last restart, the last 40 laps, Ricky Stenhouse has done a great job of maintaining that 21st position, which made him the first car one lap down. And Stenhouse will get the free pass. He'll pit along with the lead lap cars and then line up, tail end of the lead lap. Let's take an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series, brought to you by Sprint. Kyle Busch has led five times as many laps as teammate Denny Hamlin today. Get unlimited access to NASCAR with the NASCAR Mobile 13 app. And no metering, no throttling, no overages while you're on the Sprint Network. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. We run far enough then that no one really went with any strategy other than just four tires, Sunoco race fuel, and adjustments. Look at the top two of lead lap drivers, lap leading drivers this season from the Joe Gibbs camp. Way ahead of everybody else. Basically they, more than double any yeah, other driver. They came out of the box like that. You think back to Daytona, Kenson sat there and led that race till they had engine trouble. Kyle Busch every week leads the race, leads the most laps. We were talking about the rubber build up on the track and uh, when we first started practice here, that was Friday morning. That was Friday morning when we first uh, got here. And then we transitioned into today. You can see that uh, a lot of rubber been on, on the track. The groove has widened out considerably. And one thing is kind of interesting is how these tires, when they're hot under a caution, will pick that rubber up off of the racetrack. You look at the track right now, after we run a few laps, we'll come back and take a look at it again. It's amazing how the hot tires cleans the track just a little bit. I know that sounds crazy, but it really happens. It picks that rubber right up off the track. As we said, it does not go down into the concrete. It just lays, lays on the top. Lays on top of it. Four drivers took the wave around, but none of them getting back on the lead lap. That meant that they chose not to pit and were out in front of the leader, so get waved around to the back of the line. Let's go to pit road. Mike, ever since the cloud cover came out, Hamlin's car has gone tighter and tighter. And then you throw in compound of that with being more back in traffic. Arrow tight for the 11. Hamlin will restart 10th. Matt Kenseth, Kyle Busch up front. Truex and Mark Martin, Montoya and Kane, McMurray and Harvick. Jimmy Johnson, Denny Hamlin, the top 10. 16 lead lap cars as we restart at lap 131. Boy, Kyle Busch uh, spun the tires on that start in the 56, and Martin Truex was all up in the back of him. But uh, once again, Martin did a great job of not creating an issue. Martin Truex Jr. in the 56, he's had his hands full with Joe Gibbs drivers on restarts. They don't want to go like I do. And I tell you, the 56 and Truex has been as good as the 20 and the 18 over the uh, long run. Yeah, he's a contender today. He is. And he, his plan is to win it. I think that's another driver that may be a contender. Jamie McMurray in that one, working on Casey Kane in the five. Right now, this is a battle for sixth. But there comes old Blue Eyes, that number 48, Jimmy Johnson back there. 50, 60 laps ago was basically going a lap down. Here he is well inside the top 10, talking about Jimmy Johnson. And, and the car looks perfect. I mean, I watched him come up off the both corners. Thing is in the track and digging. Eighth for Johnson. They single file it behind him. Harvick, Hamlin, Keslowski, Boyer, Logano, and Jeff Gordon. And Jr. Dale Jr. in the 88. Dale Earnhardt Jr. McMurray on the outside. Casey Kane on the bottom. And Jimmy Johnson is there. Jimmy's sitting there saying, like you do going down the highway, come on, boys, pick a lane. Pretty nice. I, again, just what a great recovery by the 48 to get them back in the game. 
Now we've been talking about Jamie McMurray and the one in that red car up there, but his teammate Juan Pablo Montoya, Chris Hero in that group, they had an awfully solid pit stop. Right now, Juan is in the fourth position. The last time the two Earnhardt Ganassi racing drivers had both cars in the top 10 at the finish of race, well over a year ago, Bristol in March of 2012. Now they're both actually in the top seven. Yeah, wow. said, this little team has gotten better every week. They've been showing a lot of promise lately. In fifth place, ageless Mark Martin, Steve. Mike, early in the race, he said that his car was a little bit loose, but since then, he's told his team that the balance of his car, he said, is fantastic. Keep it up. Well, I'm sure adjustments and then probably the way the weather has changed. There's no one that knows this racetrack any better than Mark Martin does. His success here over the years has been amazing. A lot of experience here. This is his 54th start though we're talking about Mark Martin. Uh, in 55 starts, you probably figure something out, you know? Well, first time he came here in the early 80s, he finished top five. A few laps down, but it was a top five. Yeah, yeah, he was five laps down, but the second place car was three laps yeah. down, so that wasn't a bad day. But Racing you know, wasn't quite what we what it is today. The thing about Mark is he his car always is so fast through the middle of the corner. You watch him with Casey Kane or some of these guys he races with, always gaps everybody right through the center of the corner. Right here we see that the 78 car, Kurt Busch, looks like Todd Barrier made some good adjustments on that car. We saw that car really sideways before that caution. Kurt Busch up to 16. Younger brother Kyle is second, half a second behind. Race leader Matt Kenseth, 140 completed over. Enter for a chance to win the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado LTZ, a VIP Chevy racing experience for two. Meet and greet Tony Stewart. Visit winthenewsilverado.com to enter. 148 laps complete. Woo. Matt Kens has turned to lead a while. Son, getting a little tight there for the fourth and uh, fifth. They're all back in there. The one car, Jamie McMurray, gets a great launch off of turn four. And watch this. Uh, hello. Bam. Mark just put, Mark said, okay, okay, you want it that bad? I'll get out of your way. We used to call that giving him the chrome horn, but the bumpers aren't chromed anymore. No, that's just a little wake-up call. Yep. Yeah, but Mark Martin ended up losing, I think, all three of those spots. But Mark Martin's the kind of guy there, he's going to say, hey, you want it that bad? Go ahead. And now, both of the Earnhardt Ganassi with Felix Sabati Chevrolets are in the top five. Montoya fourth, McMurray fifth. Casey Kane there in the five, six, the head of Jimmy Johnson. Then Mark Martin, Kevin Harvick, Brad Keselowski, the top ten. NASCAR allows each organization four tests at racetracks that we actually race at. They elected to come here and test. Obviously, it's paying off. This team just keeps getting better and better as uh, 2013 rolls on. And that's good news because if you think about Montoya and McMurray both, uh, we're coming to some of their favorite racetracks. We got a road course coming up in not too long. Uh, we can go back to uh, Indy before too long. Those are tracks where those guys have been really successful. Now Casey Kane has passed McMurray back. And, uh, Jamie drops to sixth, and he may lose that here to Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, when Casey Kane in the five went by him, uh, he lost a lot of ground, and there you see Jimmy Johnson just driving by him. Well, that happened to McMurray in the first long run of the race, the first 80 miles. Yeah, he's really good. The, the one of McMurray is really good on new tires. Looks like the long run doesn't suit him so well. Yeah, and that's about 25 laps, and that's about how long into that first run he started losing ground. Jimmy Johnson today started 24th. He is currently sixth. There's how he got there. And it was right about there is where he made that green flag pit stop, got in there early, and I, that really has paid dividends. Steve? And before that green flag pit stop, Jimmy reported that the car was chattering all four tires. Now the condition he's most concerned with, he is tight on landing. And, and what that really means is, is when you go down in these corners, the car gets a almost a negative G to it as it goes up and then it's 
lands right down in the center of the corner. When it lands, it can do one of two things. It can land nice and soft and turn, or it can land hard and take off up the track. Kurt Busch in that 78, he is still sideways, but he's passing other drivers. He just drive, yep. drove by Joey Logano on that 22, moved himself up into the 14th spot. Oh, that thing's a lot better than it was there. I Much thought, better. I thought Logano, yesterday's winner, who's driving the 22, uh, Roger Penske's Ford, whoa, 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 right up in front on. of Dale Jr. As that car almost got away from Joey. I thought Joey might have a top five car today, but gosh. Trouble with Matt Kenseth as Kyle Busch flashes past for the lead. Steve. His comment was, I think we just blew up. He's dropped to the bottom side of the racetrack. Oh, no. Oh, you can see smoke coming out the right side, which is where the exhaust pipe, there he just gets past again. Yeah, man, there's nothing you can do. Joy Logano on the 22, he has an issue. He's coming to pit road. You saw smoke coming off the right front. He's got a left front tire, I believe, flat. Joey Logano in the 20. I think you're right, Darrell. Yeah. He slid up the track. Darrell Jr. Uh, Dale Jr. almost got into him, and uh, Logano came to pit road. But, oh, Kenseth's car just sounded awful as he came by. And that's going to be so disappointing for Matt because he had this place circled as one that he knew he could just walk away with. Now you see how agonizing 35 miles an hour is down pit road as Logano's pit is way down towards turn number one. Matt? And Logano reporting the team. The left front tire is down, almost shredded. Going to work on the right side. Going to lose a lot of time here. And Logano, they have slowly migrated the balance of the car closer to what he was looking for, Mike. Matt Kenseth makes the hard left turn from the front straightaway into the garage. And now, caution is on the speedway. That traps Joey Logano. He exits the pit tires. And watch this. Kenseth trying to nurse that car along. It might say it was his race to lose. And as at Daytona, when he blew up while leading, Matt Kenseth appears to be out of this race. Yeah, that's uh, that has every indication. Probably dropped the valve. Something in the valve train knocked a hole in the piston. And you see all over, all over Jimmy Johnson's roof cam. Of course, the same thing would be on his windshield. As they say, pack it up, boys. We'll get them next week. It was looking like their race. Not today. Yeah, Joey Logano in that 22 car that just had made that stop. Right now, he is showing two laps down. I think he'll stay out and take the wave around because I think all the leaders will be on pit road. He'll get one of those two laps back. He's got to make that 18 car and 18 team a little nervous. They had engine failure last week at Charlotte, and here they are today. And all of the Michael Walter racing drivers, their engines as well, they all come from the same place. Pit road is open. Steve. What Pablo Montoya, Mike, saying that his car is getting loose when he leans on it too hard, so they're going to make a track bar adjustment and an air pressure adjustment. Krista? Kyle Busch asking his crew chief, Dave Rogers, what can you give me to help me with entry? I need that more than I need the exit. They're going to make another adjustment, consistent adjustments on the 18, Matt. Martin Truex Jr.'s team trying to fix one problem but not hurt another area. He says he's just as free as he can handle it going across the bumps. You can see right side, or two tires for the 56. That's about all he can handle going across the bumps. Meanwhile, the five of Casey Kane, they were really pleased with the adjustment they made on the previous stop, which was the track bar. Kyle Busch yards everybody off pit road. They took just right side tires, as did Martin Truex, Jamie McMurray, and Denny Hamlin. Finishing up the third caution of the day, Jeff Burton's number 31 got the free pass. Bobby Labonte took the wave around to get back on the lead lap. Eight other cars took the wave around as well. Ready for the restart, Kyle Busch, Martin Truex on the front row, McMurray Hamlin, Montoya Kane, Johnson Harvick, Keslowski and Mark Martin are the first of the 21 lead lap cars as they roll off into turn one. Truex with nobody in front of him now can challenge for the lead and here he comes on the inside. Boy, Denny Hammond though with that 11 back there, he got a great run off turn two. He pulls right up there in the mix. Hamlin went from 11th to 4th on that two tire pit stop and now he runs third behind Bush and Truex 
ahead of McMurray and Montoya, the top five. So the big question is about Matt Kenseth, who led 29 laps of this race. Might he get back out there? Here's Jeff Hammond with what's fresh off the wire, brought to you by KFC. Matt, we see you already got your street clothes on. Looks like your day's done. Losing engine? Yeah, yeah, some broken engine, so it's, uh, man, it's disappointing. I mean, I feel like uh, JGR is, you know, three of the strongest teams in the garage with, with you know, it seems like we got the best cars out there, equal to the best cars, but, you know, you have to finish these things. Obviously, there's been some some issues in that department. So uh, I got a lot of faith in them guys. They uh, they'll get it, they'll get it figured out. I uh, want to thank Dollar General and Toyota and uh, the Home Depot. So we had had a great car today. Pretty disappointed to be standing here. Tough day, Matt. And that's what's fresh off the wire. Thank you, Jeff. Travis Quapel has just blown up. Now his Toyota's engines don't come from the same place as the Gibbs. However, when you blow up immediately after the restart. There may be some driver input involved rather than just something happening in the powertrain. And Mike, it absolutely looked the same. Different engine supplier, as you said, but smoke coming out of that exhaust pipe. Watch these two guys right here. Watch uh, 42 of Juan Montoya and uh, 48, Jimmy Johnson. And Jimmy, yikes, you're holding me up, old buddy. And up the hill goes a 42 of Montoya, just enough for Jimmy to try to get by. Didn't quite but quite able to make the pass. I think Jimmy thought better about messing with Montoya very much. Then you have Kurt Busch in the 78 and Ryan Newman trading a little paint. They were teammates back at Penske Racing a number of years ago. In fact, uh, Kurt Busch pushed Ryan Newman to that 2008 Daytona 500 win. He just about pushed him into Miles. The monster. The monster. <laughs> Kyle Busch's biggest threat today, Matt Kenseth, his teammate. So now Busch has led 114 circuits back out front. Montoya Johnson, this remains the race for seventh place, about two and a half seconds behind the leader. I, you know, I think that car, the 56 car, Martin Truex Jr., he has been solid as a rock ever since the race started. He's sitting right there in second place. Better not stum your toe or he'll be all over you for a win here today. But the real wild card here is Mother Nature. We're back under full sun once again. How does that change things? Well, we know when we got the cloud cover, and that solved a lot of drivers' issues they were having with their race car, but absolutely the sun is breaking back out. We keep talking about this rubber on this concrete surface. It just, it's going to make it slicker. Yeah, and, and another guy that I think is going to be a factor is that we're looking at the 48 and the 42. They're playing games here. There's going to be some issues here if you don't be careful. Uh, but the five car, Casey Kane, fast last week, could have easily won the Coke 600. And uh, he's got another good solid going, run going today. One hundred seventy three laps complete. Kyle Busch leading Martin Truex by seven tenths. Casey Kane, the first Chevrolet in third. Brad Keselowski, the first Ford in tenth. How about a Fox Sports one? Crank it up. Sports Network coming August 17th, Fox Sports 1, as Casey Kane takes second away from Martin Truex and sets sights on Kyle Busch. I think the thing going on with Casey Kane in that five car, of our top five drivers, he's the only one that came to pit road and changed four tires. I think over the course of the long run, that will pay dividends. Definitely will, Larry. His car is really, really good right now. 
Check with Matt. Mike, shortly before the pass, Martin Truex told his team the car has gotten tighter again. Now, Chad Johnson's crew chief told him it could be the wedge adjustment or it could be the two tires. He thinks the fact that it took two tires has made that car tighter on this run. I would agree with that, Larry. Don't take two tires. The car is going to tighten up a little bit as it goes into the run. Well, going back to that variable that Mike Joy talked about, the sun, I think when the four tires really will prevail is when the sun comes out, then this racetrack really loses grip. Larry, I think we're only looking at about another 15 minutes of sunshine. If the clouds keep moving in the direction they have been, there is uh, much more of a heavy cloud cover to the west. We'll see. But that's just, that that's really confusing to the driver and the crew chief. Sun in, sun out. Make a change, wrong way. Something's always changing. Glad I'm not a weatherman. Kyle Busch leads Casey Kane by 1.2 seconds at Dover. Kyle Busch is the leader, but Jimmy Johnson is the man on the move as he closes in on third place Martin Truex. Little slide there up the hill. I mean, guys, really, truly, would you expect any less from a guy that's has been as dominant here and has won as many races here as Jimmy Johnson? Not at, not at all. And right now, he's about a tenth of a lap quicker than Kyle Busch, the 18, our leader. Jimmy made a trip out to Oklahoma, more Oklahoma, this uh, past Thursday with his wife, Shani, in the area she's from. He and Shani donated their race winnings from the Coca-Cola 600 last week, roughly $148,000 to the Tornado Relief Fund there. Yeah, Mike Helton went along with them, Larry. They got over there with Feed the Children, and they handed out a lot of supplies. That was uh, what a great gesture for Jimmy and Shani to be over there doing that. And uh, including that donation, Lowe stepped up with a million dollars. Loves travel stops there in Oklahoma. One of David Reagan's sponsors made a big donation. Uh, Brandon Davis, who owns David Stremme's car, he's from Oklahoma. He stepped up, sent tractor trailer loads of supplies out there. A lot of folks working on uh, tornado relief. Wasn't that many laps ago, Casey Kane in the five just drove by Martin Truex Jr. in the 56. And now Truex and Johnson went by Casey Kane, Matt. Mike Casey Kane told his team that with the sun out, his car has gone to the free side. He's hanging on because the clouds are coming back by. He's hoping that will help tighten up that five machine. I think we're going to have more clouds than sun as this afternoon wears on, but it's going to be a mix of both. Yeah, see, if your car is if your car is a little bit loose, the last thing you want is somebody stuck up in your back bumper. So when somebody gets over and starts maybe with, messing with you a little bit, the best thing you do is let them go because you don't want to take a chance on spinning out. Kyle Busch ahead of Martin Truex now by two seconds. Jimmy Johnson third, another half second back. Coming up, the Fox Mid-Race Report. In Dover, Delaware, Kyle Busch has been dominating for the last five races. He's been outside the top 20, but he's your leader. And time now for the AT&T Mid-Race Report. I'm Chris Myers. Glad you're watching NASCAR on Fox here from Dover, Delaware. Matt Kenseth, in case you missed it, with a season-leading three wins earlier. He'd been a halfway leader in five races this year. Didn't win any of those. Today, he led 29 laps, but engine failure on lap 157 has taken him out of the race. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch has led the most laps, Daryl. The leader of the most laps has failed to win the last four races. Who are you keeping an eye on, Daryl? A guy that won here in 2007. His only win here, Martin Truex Jr. Today, he will open him a can of Napa know-how on this field. <laughs> I like Denny Hamlin to close this deal out. He started on the pole, fell back. His team made a good call, got him that track position back. He has autism speaks on his car. FedEx gave up the car for that great call. I'm going to see what Denny Hamlin has for these boys in the second half. Michael, in the last five races, Kyle Busch only has one finish inside the top 20. Hadn't been from lack of speed. It's been Rex and engine failure. He has the speed today, and I think he closes the deal on his third win of 2013, Krista. In the last nine Dover races, the driver leading at halfway has won four of those nine. And on each of those occasions, that driver was Jimmy Johnson. He didn't lead the halfway lap today, Chris. He was just about a half second short, and he's out front now.
And we know old five time. Meanwhile, reigning champ Brad Keselowski trying to win his first race of the year. The longest drought for a defending champ in 10 years. And this now the 13th race. He does have his crew chief, Paul Wolf, back from suspension. Keselowski in the top 10 all afternoon has just slipped back. Has to make up some ground over the second half of this race. That's your AT&T mid-race report. We'll have more from the Autism Speaks 400 in just a moment. 15 miles past the halfway lap in Dover, Delaware. Jimmy Johnson from 22nd, or excuse me, from 24th on the grid to first in just a little over half the race. You know what, Mike? Larry, y'all think I'm crazy, but I believe Chad Knauss had this whole thing planned. When this, when this cloud cover came in, the track cooled off, the whole car would be perfect. He's good, but he can't control the weather, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? You don't buy that? <laughs> Martin Turek started second. Kyle Busch started third. More than half the Dover races have been won from the front two rows. And Chris DeVoto was telling me during commercial break, Kyle Busch, his car's getting real tight, won't turn. Well, again, that's just, I think, a big, big swing in the weather right here. It's going to change these cars around quite a bit. And the sun's popping back through the clouds as pole sitter Denny Hamlin runs it fourth, 4.7 seconds off the lead. Casey Kane closes in on fourth place. So two Hendrick cars in the top five and two for Joe Gibbs, one for Michael Walter Racing. Here's last week's winner, Kevin Harvick. Mm, that could Moving be past Landon Castle. That could be trouble for these guys. That's about where he was running halfway hanging through the Coca-Cola Six Hundred last Kind of hanging around. And the 55 of Mark Martin is our seventh place car, 9.7 seconds back. After starting sixth. Now, Kurt Busch in that 78 car really lost the handle on this car about 100 laps ago, but now he's sitting there in the eighth position. Yeah. Speed every week in that car. Yeah, they've made a nice adjustment on that car, Larry, and he's working his way back. Chip Ganassi's cars continue to contend with uh, Juan Pablo Montoya ninth after starting 14th. And teammate Jamie McMurray right with him in 10. See, and both these cars remind me of cars that have tested. When you come to a test, you'll go out and you'll make a long run, 30 laps, 40 laps. That's how these cars are pretty good for that distance. They seem to fall off a little bit over the long haul. Jeff Gordon running 11th after a 20, 20th place start. One of Dover's big winners. Tony Stewart in that 14 car. He's been hanging in there. That's another organization that came up here and tested a couple of weeks ago. I remember he got the lucky dog not too terribly long ago. Yes, sir. And that Code 3 Associates uh, on Tony's Hood is a charitable organization that's rescued a lot of animals uh, that fell victim to the Oklahoma tornadoes in the last couple of weeks. Boy, this is an interesting pair right here. Our defending champion, Brad Keselowski, in the two car. And Larry, once again, week after week, this little 13 car, Casey Mears, Booty Barker, the crew chief, hangs around that 12th to 17th, 15th range all the time. Yeah, this is the battle for the two highest running Ford drivers right now. Looks like Casey Mears is going to take that spot away from Keselowski in the two. The little car working pretty good right now. And you're right, Darrell. Casey Mears has been in the top 15 all day long. Clint Boyer has made no progress today. He started 15th. He's running 15th. He hasn't run much worse than 15th. Hasn't run much better than 15th. He's car 15, Mike. Oh, that's right. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. behind him started 12th. Now we're back to 18 seconds off the lead for his Chevrolet. Been on the lead lap all day. You know, we at one time called Carl Edwards Concrete Carl. The concrete hadn't been that no, great to Carl over the last couple of years. Right now, Carl's back there in the 17th position. That was about five years ago. Yes, sir. Things have changed dramatically since he was Concrete Carl. Well, here comes his teammate, rookie Ricky Stenhouse, running 18th after uh, working hard to get the free pass and did two cautions ago. And the last car on the lead lap a Cheerio Chevy for Jeff Burton, whose car owner, Richard Childress, uh, had three top tens here during his driving career here on the Monster Mile. 
Now, the two other cars that were on the lead lap, Joey Logano had made a green flag pit stop when the last caution came out, so he fell off the lead lap, and Bobby Labonte had taken a wave around to get back on the lead lap. He finally, uh, since he was off sequence with the rest of the leaders, had to come in and make a pit stop in his number 47. So they're a lap down. Speaking of green flag pit stops, they're going to be coming up here in about five to ten laps for all of our lead lap drivers. Let's go way high up top of turn number three, Jeff Hammond. Yeah, Mike, as a matter of fact, I've gotten to the very top of the grandstand up, just outside of turn three, so I can watch those pit stops coming up. And the main thing is right now, you take a look through here, you can really watch what Jimmy Johnson is doing so well, getting to the bottom of this racetrack, hugging the bottom still, staying right on the bottom, but when he catches lap cars, he's able to go high. The car is really working all over the racetrack, but his Ford bike is really looking worth working best for 48 right now. Good drive off the corner from way up here. You can see all the way around the racetrack and see exactly where that 48 car is making up a lot of time guys and that's what we talked about at the top of the show the fact that he was going to run the bottom but he had found that he could use the top when he needed to you know there was a newspaper whose slogan was covers dixie like the dew well that's hammond he's everywhere <laughs> steve well jimmy johnson's feedback very similar to mr hammond's observation they asked jimmy chad canals did if his car was better on this run he said it is and he said it is particularly better on late exit off the corner and we've seen so many cars exit coming up out of the hole up on the straightaway back in will snap around this car is not doing that and that's why it's going so fast how about our fifth place driver denny hamlin matt mike when the sun came out denny hamlin said he simply could not touch the throttle at all the car is just absolutely gone to the free side where it was a little snug at the beginning of the race Back in 11th after using a free pass to get back on the lead lap during the race's first caution. He's made good use of all that. Chris Devota, Tony Stewart is up to 11. And boy, does this organization need it. Tony said that Dover has been the track where we have struggled the most. This is the one that we have to figure out. We're going to have a shot at this. We have to survive. So far, so good for the 14. You know, we talked about Carl Edwards and how in the last few races here, forward progress has been difficult to achieve for Carl. We listened in. All right, we passed somebody. That's good. Yeah, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I was just really excited to pass somebody. <laughs> you got to find silver linings to clouds. That was a silver lining. Every cloud. So Eric Almarola on pit road along with Paul Menard and Marcus Ambrose. So this round of green flag stops has begun. You know, to Chris Devota's point about Tony Stewart, he has not even had a top 20 finish here since May of 2010. The place has not been good to him. Jeff Burton coming in, along with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Rick Biffle as well. Krista? Dale Earnhardt Jr. saying his car needs to turn better entry and exit. He wanted them to go back on the track bar adjustment the last time they made a change. He said, I need more track bar this time. There you see that wrench going in. They will make a track bar adjustment to give Junior more turnability. Steve? Lynn Boyer in and out after making his stop. Joe Nima checks in. A couple of lead lap cars among this group, including Boyer. Krista. Clint Boyer in as well. He said the car, the last run has been plowing terrible all the way through the turns. What Boyer really wants to do is free it up without losing the rear grip in those oh-so-important corners. David Gilliland in and the second-place driver, Martin Truex, headed for the pit lane. At lap 235, scheduled green flag pit stops for most all the leaders. And Kurt Busch, who really made hay in this green flag run. He restarted 17th on the last caution, and he is top 10 as he comes to pit road. Steve? And Mike, Kurt Busch says, I feel like I have a slow leak in my right front tire, so this stop coming at a good time. Four tires, Matt. Martin Truex Jr. started second. The car began this run on the tight side, but when the sun came out, it swung to the free side. Looking for a wedge adjustment as well as air pressure, Steve. And a chassis adjustment for the 48 as well, Matt. Four tires and Sunoco fuel, Matt. And the 29 of Kevin Harvick making his way down to his victory. His car, like so many others, very 
sensitive toward whether we have clouds or shade. Harvick is just uh, way too free. The previous run, the adjustments didn't help Krista on this last run. For Kyle Busch, he had gotten a little bit tight on that run and up, but it cost him a few positions. He's saying, I need to be able to turn better. He, said he knows that two thirds of his lap time comes from those turns. Dave Rogers saying what Kyle has done so well this year is look ahead to the end of the race and give us the feedback we need. Steve? Juan Pablo Montoya Chevrolet hits pit road and they're going to make a wedge adjustment in the left rear. That's the report there. Four tires of fuel. Also an air pressure adjustment, Krista. Steve, meanwhile, for Montoya's teammate Jamie McMurray, he talked about how the balance had changed. He went from loose to tight. His car likes the sun, Matt. Right, because Lassie's car is tight. Meanwhile, the five of Casey Kane, his car really got free on that last run. They debated between a wedge and a track bar adjustment. They're definitely going for the track bar air pressure. The two is a gone. They made an air pressure change for Keselowski as well. And this is that difficult time where cars on fresh tires are running much faster than cars on worn tires, and everybody's got to mind their mirrors as they've been three wide all around this racetrack. There's nowhere to hide when you get uh, somebody closing about 10, 15 miles an hour faster and you're running. You're not sure which way you need to go. All we the lead lap cars have now been on pit road, Larry. Yeah, we cycled through that set of green flag stops about five or six laps. Everybody knows the importance of four fresh tires. 240 laps completed over. Jimmy Johnson, your leader in Dover after 246 laps of the FedEx 400, benefiting autism speaks. Now this is our green flag pit times, the two laps, including the trip to pit road. Look right here, the significance though of Jimmy Johnson, because before those stops, he had about a second lead over Martin Trex Jr. in that 56. He more than doubled that simply because of those two laps. You can see how close these five drivers, but you don't see Martin Trex Jr. in the 56 on that list. A little bit's a lot. Six second place finishes for Truex since his victory here in 2007. That is a kind of Harry Gant like uh, when Harry went through a long string before getting to victory lane. And he was good here, Mr. September. Martin Truex, though, is going to have Kyle Bush to deal with shortly. Kyle is about half a tenth of a second quicker on every lap than the second place car right now. Well, you would have to believe that Dave Rogers and Kyle Busch's team, they made some pretty major adjustments on that 18 car on that last stop because definitely the handling had went away. Traffic three wide and Joe Nemechek, a little slower than Marcus Ambrose, who's a little slower than Martin Truex. And here comes Kyle, trying to capitalize as Truex threads the needle in traffic. There he goes. He puts that right fender right against that left rear quarter panel, and you holler, Uncle, Uncle, go on, get away. But Truex has the drive off the top side of turn two, and that's the preferred lane. See what happens down here at the south end of the track. Just remember, guys, at the end of this day, if Kyle Busch runs all the laps, he will have run 800 laps here this weekend. And won one of those races on Friday in the National Camping Road Truck Series. Truck race on Friday. He had a great shot at winning yesterday, and he uh, he's in the hunt today. So Martin Truex back to third, Matt. Might now assist in the period if he's got to hang on until they hit pit road for their next stop. Their chance to adjust more on the 56. The wedge adjustment has not helped the exit. Martin is telling Chad Johnson, in fact, it's made the entry even more free. And now the car is pushing even more aggressively through the center of the corner. You know, I think we all want to see Martin Trex Jr. go to victory lane, but this is what happens to him. It seems like all of these races where he's so strong. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's like they, they, they're not sure about what adjustment to make to fix the car. Uh, and, and that seems like that's what gets him behind. Here's the most telling statistic, Daryl. Martin's and Kyle Busch's fastest lap of this race was set back at lap five. Jimmy Johnson's and Casey Kane's was set 170 laps after that. Yeah, well, I just think back to some of the races where we've seen the 56 of Truex be a contender. And uh, Kansas comes to mind right away where he dominated the race, but they didn't make the right adjustment at the end of the race, and he got beat. And it seemed like they get to that point. They need that one final little adjustment, and they're not real sure what to do. 
either over adjust or under adjust. And I, I, I can't put that all on the crew chief either. A lot of that's feedback. The driver's got to be giving them constantly good feedback. That's where Jimmy Johnson and Kyle Busch and some of the guys are so good. You're riding with Casey Mears trying to stay on the lead lap in front of Jimmy Johnson, who's now been out in front for 47 circuits. Second most of all drivers. Kyle Busch has led 150 laps today. Yeah, we've talked a lot this year about the struggles of the Ford drivers, and right now, Casey Mears, Brad Keselowski, the only two Ford drivers on the lead lap. Keselowski right now in his two car up in 12. Yeah, we heard a little bit ago from Carl Edwards, and, uh, you know, Carl is running 17th a lap down. But the first car one lap down. First car right yep. now, yeah. All right, Jimmy works underneath Casey. And it's not been a great day for Danica Patrick. She is four laps down, had a car that was all but impossible to handle in the early stages. Kind of stacked up the field and had a little contact with David Stremme. But they have made the, I mean, she got three laps down right away. She got in some heavy traffic, got an unscheduled pit stop, got three laps down. Ever since that happened early in the day, she's been able to kind of hang in there. And she has lost another lap to the leaders, but a lot better than she was when they started. Fourth place, that's Casey Kane up high, Denny Hamlin down low. Hamlin started from the pole for the second over race in a row, trying to work his way back to the front in that Toyota. I know it's early in this run, but I think Darian Grubb and, and Denny Hamlin's team, I think they've made the right adjustments on this 11 car. I think Denny Hamlin's one of those guys, you know, got, still got a little back issue. I think he probably doesn't wear himself out and, and saves a little something for the end. Hamlin up for four as Jimmy Johnson's lead over Kyle Busch is now four seconds. One hundred thirty three laps to go in Dover. Here's an inside look at what's happening in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series brought to you by Sprint. Jimmy Johnson had uh, a slide during qualifying so he started deep in the field 24th. He is the biggest mover in this race. He is now the leader. In unlimited access to NASCAR, no metering, no throttling, no overages on the Sprint Network. Learn more at Sprint.com slash speed. I think the impressive thing about Jimmy Johnson, and, and Larry mentioned this uh, or talked about this when they made that stop a little earlier and everybody else that first stop and uh, how that got them kind of a little bit of a cushion, got a caution, made some great changes to the car, and now they're right where they need to be. David Gilliland. Two laps back. First car two laps down, but of course nowhere near the three the free pass position. There are five cars one lap down. Jimmy Johnson, your race leader. Here's an a statistic I find interesting. We know Jimmy has seven wins here. Only one of them has come on a day when the mercury was above 80 degrees. Temperatures hovering near 90 today. To say that Jimmy Johnson is a fair weather winner at Dover would be appropriate. All of his wins, but his first one came with attempts in the 70s. The last top 10 here for Stuart Haas Racing was by Ryan Newman. He finished eighth in the fall of 2010. Here's where that team is running right now. And we're told Ryan Newman may have an issue with his number 39, Matt. Mike, about 25 laps ago, Newman kept reporting the car was getting tighter and tighter. It was plowing. Then he thought something might be amiss with the power steering pump. Now he thinks that possibly the culprit is something wrong with the right front shock. He told the team, have one ready for the next time they have pit road. If they get a caution, they will try to change that and see if that's what's wrong for the 39. But he says definitely something's wrong in the front of this car. Enter for a chance to win the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado LTZ and a VIP Chevy racing experience for two. Meet and greet Stuart Haas lead driver Tony Stewart. Visit winthenewsilverado.com. Smoker is 33, Landon Castle from the right side of that car. Now that's where the exhaust pipes are and we've already had two apparent engine failures today. Right side fender, yeah, I think it's a yeah. tire rub. I, I, I believe he's got a tire rub. It, it seems but to it's only do the, it the in track the track bar. Yeah, I believe the track bar might be broken. Larry, it looks like the left rear is swinging out. But see right there, the left rear is swinging out. 
that track bar is what holds the rear end assembly in the center of the car, and you can see it's cut that left rear tire down now. We've seen that several times in the different divisions here. This place puts such a load on everything about that race car. The way that rear end steering, that's going to be a hard car to handle getting it to pit road in one piece, but the Iowa driver makes it work, and he'll get to pit lane with a flat left rear, and we will stay green. Yeah, nothing gets a rest at this one-mile racetrack. You just spend so much time in the corners, even though it's a one-mile racetrack. Yeah, these cars are, I mean, the, the, the speed gain in this car this year has been through the turns, really. Uh, the big seven-inch rear blade, the camera in the right rear tire, everything they've done to this car has really made it just go through the corners faster. 124 laps to go under full sunshine. We've had sunshine and clouds, and the weather has really change the complexion of this race. Right now, Martin Truex has been able to close back up on Kyle Busch, the second place car. Matt? Mike running third. Truex knows this is one of his better racetracks. A Sprint Cup win here, two nationwide wins. This could definitely be his day to break the winless streak. We don't need much. We can win this thing, guys. The biggest thing he said, he needs more help at the beginning of the run. He's gone 215 races since that first win, Mike. And if he wins today, it'll be the longest streak in NASCAR history from the first to second career wins. To the garage. Smoke from the right side of Martin Truex's car. We talked about it. Good. Same engine supplier as Matt Kenseth. I know when Matt had a problem, that would worry me. And either Timmy Hill getting in the turn two wall or Martin Truex has brought out the caution. Let's take a look at him. See if I can keep it running under caution here. Yeah, 10-4. Truex wants to. Open, you're going to have to be the tailwind anyway. Yeah, I'd, wants to finish this race if he can. So got to bring him pit road. Carl Edwards. Go ahead and bring it to us this time. Bring it to us. Stop in the box. Carl has worked hard to yeah, stay in that position of the first car one lap down. So uh, there's Carl, who's Roush Fenway Ford will get the free pass. Caution at lap 279 is the fourth today. Boy, with 121 laps to go, there are four other Toyota drivers out there very, very nervous. Well, Larry, let's think a minute. Qualifying. The Toyotas have been really, really fast. They dominated qualifying. In the race, they've been really, really fast. But we've had some engine, they've had some engine failures. They may have to back these things down a little bit. And Darrell, we talked yesterday on speed during one of the practice shows that shortening this race to 400 miles has allowed the team to run a lot more practice laps. I wonder if that could be a factor. It could be, but when you see smoke out the tailpipe, that's usually a, a, a top-end problem, a valve or a rock arm or something like that. Valve spring. Steve Burns, what do you find out? Well, Jimmy Johnson made a chassis adjustment, DW. He said he was tight on landing, tight in the center, free off. Krista. When Kyle Busch described his race car, he didn't just say tight, he said tight. He said, I've got to rotate through that center, Matt. And Denny Hamlin says, I need more help, if anything, with lateral grip. They've already made the chassis adjustment. Four tire change for both he and Casey Kane. Kane wanted to go up on the track bar. His car was too tight near the center of the corner that last run. Johnson first off pit road Kyle Kyle Busch Kevin Harvick but watch uh, coming on to pit road see the 48 and the 39 as they enter the pit lane here Whoa. boy and Jimmy Johnson's pitting so early on pit road, he has to get slowed down early. When he came down off the banking, the 39 car, Newman, on the brakes, got the car out of control. Jimmy Johnson, the points leader, the only driver in the top five all season. Your leader with 117 laps to go in time for an AT&T race break. Brought to you by the nation's fastest 4G LTE network. AT&T, rethink possible. Some of the Ford drivers getting ready 
here at the Monster Mile and not much of a factor. Denny Hamlin, who was leading early, the pole sitter for the second straight week, having some problems entering pit road. And then Kyle Busch, who has dominated in his Toyota, leading the most laps, passing Matt Kenseth, who led 29 laps, but engine failure, sending him in his crew chief home. Jimmy Johnson moving his way up from 24, pushing his way to the front to take over the lead here. And some tight racing with the Ryan Newman and Kurt Busch. And moments ago, another Toyota engine problem. Martin Truex Jr. Heartbreak for him and our Jeff Hammond is standing by. Martin, I mean, solid day going here. You lost an engine. You can tell us what it kind of feels like right now. It hurts, you know, uh, especially with where we're at points. But so proud of my team, uh, everybody at Michael Walter Racing, everybody on this Napa Toyota. We uh, we had a really good race car today. And, you know, sitting there running second, third, fourth all day long and uh, felt like we were just a little bit away from having something for the win. Uh, just a little bit too tight on the, on the short run, but really fast in the long run. And uh, I just wish we could have, wish we could have got one more crack at it on pit road and uh, raced them to the end. Just a shame. Good, good, I good. thank TRD. They've been doing a good job with their engine program, making big power. Just, uh, just a shame we got to blow them up. Thanks. So six times he's finished second since his last win. Further frustration with Michael Waltrip now of the four Toyotas remaining they're in the top 11 you have to wonder how those drivers feel with the blown engines of Kenseth and Truex well I've been in a race car before and had your teammate blow up and you're just absolutely nervous wreck you have to make it to the finish these guys could have won this race you don't get chances with cars like Matt Kenseth and, and Truex had very often so it hurts we'll keep a close eye on Kyle Busch and the other drivers Mike as they're getting ready to go green that's your AT&T race report speeding penalties Carl Edwards and Ryan Newman Newman had no power steering fluid. They had replaced all of that. Hopefully that will cure his woes. A number of drivers take the wave around, including Joey Logano and Greg Biffle. Kyle Busch inside of Jimmy Johnson. Casey Kane giving his Chevy teammate a push down the front straightaway and into turn one. Yeah, good restart by Kane. A little better than what he, uh, what he had been doing. He'd been falling back a little, losing some ground here on the turn one. But... Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna run with Jimmy Johnson, you cannot let him get away this time. Kyle Busch has got to stay with Jimmy. If he gets away like he did last time, I, I think the race is over. Denny Hamlin in that 11 car just ran all over the back of Kurt Busch. That 78 just almost shoved him up out of the corner. Kurt the 78 is going to fight back now. Yeah, he's going to try to pay that favor back coming off turn number two. Hamlin holds that fifth spot. That 78 car has done a very similar thing to what Jimmy Johnson and a 48 bunch did. They made some great changes on that car. Heard has driven his heart out today, and he's right in the hunt. Second place, Casey Kane underneath Kyle Busch. And look at Mr. Where Did He Come From. <laughs> Kevin Harvick in that 29. It's too early for him to show up here with 113 laps to go, but he's been back there lurking outside the top five this entire race. Larry, everybody knows. I, I, just why, if Jimmy Johnson, you can't let him get away like he did earlier, or you're never going to catch him. And I think that's why we see some extra effort here on everybody's part trying to hang with the guy. One hundred twelve laps and a couple of pit stops in the offing before we get to four hundred miles here as teammates battle. That's Eric Almarola in the forty three Marcus Ambrose in the nine and they're going to have company at Richard Petty Motorsports which announced this week they have signed third generation driver Corey LaJoy and Martin Truex's younger brother Ryan to development racing deals to bring them up through and hopefully to the Sprint Cup Series as time goes on. So great news for two great young talents. Just listen to the engines in these cars. Uh, it's no wonder that something happens to them. They're turning these things over nine grand every straightaway, four hours, 400 miles. A lot of RPM, a lot of revolutions. Uh, right now, Casey Mears is in 18th position, one lap down. The driver in the free pass position right now would be Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in the 17. Remember, he got the free pass a little earlier in this race. 15 drivers on the lead lap now. Hamlin, the pole sitter, on the outside of his teammate, Kyle Busch and Kurt Busch looking on. That's also going to draw Montoya into that battle. So it'll be a four pack into turn three. Yeah, actually, the you know, they just, I don't think they've been making that 18 car any better on these pit stops. Uh, 
Matter of fact, I think everybody around him's gotten better. He stayed about the same. This is the fourth time that Kyle Busch has led over 200 laps at Dover as he battles side by side with his teammate Hamlin. And he's won two of those four races. How about Kurt Busch, Steve? Mike, a little while ago, he said he was struggling with getting his car to turn on the top side. Now he's saying the front end feels soft. It feels like it's a little bit lazy. Someone who's not Chris Devoto. Meanwhile, in his brother's pit, Kyle Busch came on the radio. He just said one word, but he said it about six times adamantly. Chatter. We've heard that a lot the entire weekend here, Darrell, out of a lot of the drivers. A lot of that can be a rubber buildup on the racetrack, a tire pressure. There's a number of issues that you can address to maybe improve or help that. Jimmy Johnson in front of teammate Casey Kane by 1.3. We checked on the practice laps of the two drivers that have lost engines today. Uh, Martin Truex ran 76 practice laps. And Matt Kenseth ran 106 practice laps. Neither of those alarmingly high, considering what's happened today. Well, and considering Matt Kenseth blew up on lap 155, that's why I kind of discount those 106 laps of practice. Well, just like last week, we ran 600 miles last week. And these engines are pretty much engineered to run about 800 miles. I mean, the parts and pieces in them are that durable. Mark Martin in the 55, started this race in the sixth position, and he's been right there inside the top 10 all race long. But look how the complexion of the race has changed as the sun and the clouds go back and forth. We started the first 100 miles with five Toyotas in the front five. Now it's four Chevys and one Toyota in the top five, one Ford in the top 10. That would be Brad Keselowski. Let's check with Matt on the fourth place car. Mike, as Denny was coming down pit road, Daniel Grubb called it audible. They went from a two-tire strategy to a four, seeing what most of the competition was doing. Denny says right now that the splitter is hitting the racetrack, and you heard him tell our crowd uh, at the beginning of the race that his back is a problem again. His team added some gel padding in the lumbar area to help comfort on this very rough Dover concrete. Yeah, I would have been very nervous about changing just two right side tires there. One, because of how few drivers we have on the lead lap, and with having about 35 to 40 laps, well over a half of a run on that set of tires. Yeah, and, and working on the seat and trying to help him with his back, uh, you know, adding some cushion in there, some padding in there. Uh, this place is grueling. You're in the corner so much. Oh, turn two. Ryan Newman tried, tried, and he finally dumped David Gilliland. Newman had hit hit him about three times before, and that was the charm out of turn two. But look think, who paid as big a price as Ryan Newman in the 39. I'm not sure this fight's over with. This went on for three straight laps. Newman trying to get by with the bumper, Watch and it. Gilliland ended up. What's the guy coming out of this 38 car? I think he might be a little ticked. Would not be the least bit surprised. He's trying to get out of his car, I know that. Well, I know who, who I would be ticked at if I was there in that go. 39 crew and he's getting out of the race car and he's going to go over and confront Mr. Newman. We'll have to talk to the drivers to find out what happened, but from our point of view, that was uncalled for. Well, if you're Ryan Newman's team, you've got a destroyed race car. That That's what makes no sense. Well, it's the fifth caution of the day, and it comes out right at lap 300. 100 miles to go in Dover. As Ryan Newman turned David Gilliland around. And that discussion probably going to continue for a while. Neither one of them looked very happy, that's for sure. And uh... Darrell, there's a bit of racing etiquette. You get to somebody's bumper, and you give them a little shot that says, I'm here, I caught you, I'm quicker, I want to get by you. But tempers boil over on a hot day in Dover. Steve. Mike, Jimmy Johnson saying he's just a little bit snug on landing. He's trying to be patient with the throttle. Four tires, no adjustments for the 48. Matt. Steve, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, he did the exact opposite of what the other cars. That was the game plan from Darian Grubb. Meanwhile, the five of Casey Kane and the 29 of Harvick. They were talking about two tires, but you can see they're going to go four for Harvick. 
But there are definitely some drivers that change two tires. You can see right there, Casey Kane in the five, Montoya in the 42. Only had 13 laps. I can kind of live with two tires right there. I go four now so I can go two later. Now this is a battle for position that brought out this fifth caution of the day. Both Ryan Newman and David Gilliland were two laps down at the time. Uh, this is a couple of laps prior. Remember, the 39 had been on pit road, had some issues. They had to hood up on the car. He had problems getting on pit road. I think he was a little frustrated, uh, the 39 car. And one lap later. And there had been about four or five issues of contact before this happened. Well, Darryl, up into the wall, and here he comes across. Whatever's at the top of this racetrack, even on the straightaway, it's going to the bottom. Well, we, we, we call it a self-cleaning racetrack, and you see right there why. Everything goes right down to the bottom of the racetrack, right into the safer barrier. Nice job by Bobby Labonte in the 47 to not be a part of this. As Ryan Newman brings out the caution flag with 100 laps to go. The FedEx 400 benefiting Autism Speaks on Fox. At Dover, Delaware, we're under caution with 96 laps to go. Here's your KFC race summary with Denny Hamlin, uh, the race leader. He's led 28 laps today. There are 16 lead lap cars back to Ricky Stenhouse, seven different leaders. We're working the fifth caution flag, 23 laps. And two of the top Toyotas, Matt Kenseth and Martin Truex, have both fallen victim to engine failure. See, this is the track position I'd like to have if we were near the end of the race. And that's why I think taking four right now, Larry, would be a hot tip. You get four now, you maybe you are back a little bit like Jimmy Johnson is, but if you come down to another caution here with 30, 40 to go, you could get two, get that track position, and win this race. Fox Sports sends our thoughts and sympathies to all of those in Oklahoma and Texas affected by last week's storms. To help, text Red Cross to 90999, and that will make a $10 donation through your cell phone, or you can go to redcross.org to participate. Your Mike, help is needed and welcome. Real quickly, I want to say uh, condolences to Clay Campbell up at Martinsville. Uh, his mom passed away over the weekend, and uh, thoughts and prayers are with us. That's right. Dorothy Earls Campbell was 80. She was the daughter, one of two daughters of Clay Earls, the track founder and the mother of uh, two children, including current track president uh, Clay Campbell. Our sympathies. And, and Daryl, to your point, definitely every driver has to make at least one more pit stop with that stop there coming with 99 laps to go. Green flag. Kurt Busch, Denny Hamlin side by side into turn one. This might be a good time to say, where'd all these guys come from, you know? Because, I mean, Kurt Busch been back there seventh or eighth most of the time. Edwards with a lap down one time. Keselowski hadn't been near the front. Here they all are up here challenging. Three wide and high comes Joey Logano. He's now in the lucky dog position. First car one lap down after fighting back from two down because a caution flag caught him on pit road making the stop. Hamlin, Bush, Edwards, Keselowski, Montoya. One Toyota, two Chevys, two Fords in the top five. That's a big change. And I just think these drivers that set the front right now, they elected to go with, a lot of them elected to go with two tires because they felt like that's something that would get them some track position. Jimmy Johnson sixth. Ryan Newman and David Gilliland checked and released from the infield care center. Here's Jeff Hammond. Here with David Gilliland. David looks like some hard, aggressive racing out there. What happened between you and Ryan? Uh, you know, Ryan just, he wrapped us, and uh, it's a shame we had a good day going. I'm so proud of everybody up front row. Uh, Frank Kerr, they've done a great job. We had a great car all day. Um, I feel like front row motorsports just really continues to progress each and every week, and uh, we had a great car today and, and, and got wrecked. So, uh, unfortunate, but, um, you know, that, that's racing. That's the way it goes, and, and we'll get them next week. I'm just real proud of the effort that Front Row Motorsports put into my race car for this weekend. We saw you go to the car after your wreck. What did you say to Ryan? What were you thinking? You know, I mean, the seven car was holding me up. We were going. We both had race cars. We were racing each other, and uh, yeah, it was just way too aggressive. Uh, speaking of way too aggressive, I mean, this little battle right here is heating up, boy. Montoya is not happy with, uh, with Keselowski in the two car. 48 is trying to get by. At 99, Carl Edwards did a great job just driving. Place 
the highest he's been all day. I don't Montoya think... almost got to Kozlowski's bumper that time out of four. I really think he would like to get to that bumper if he yeah, could. Yeah, there you go. Here comes Darrell. Wow, these drivers are going at it, holding up Jimmy Johnson here in the 48 car. Denny Hamlin in that 11, as well as Kurt Busch in the 78. They're getting further and further away from this group. Yeah, if I was Jimmy Johnson, I would watch these two guys because there's not there's a little bit of bad blood right here right now. So is Montoya getting passed by Johnson or is Montoya going after Keslowski? Contact front straight away. We know how uh, Juan Montoya. We know how he races. You hit me once, I'm going to hit you twice if I can get to you. Now Casey Kane is there too. So is Kyle Busch. So is Kevin Harvick. It's a six pack into the corner. Oh, they are stacked up behind these two, Keselowski and Montoya. Not over, boys. Not over. Jimmy Johnson sitting there saying, please, come on, boys, get single file so I can get through here. Great race for fourth place. Montoya has it. Johnson underneath Keselowski. Kane and Bush coming with Harvick. And now they brought Mark Martin, Jamie McMurray into the fray. Yeah, this is fourth through 12th in a big wad right here. You're seeing the whole group. <laughs> Always tell when you get down inside 100 miles to go. Get down inside 100 miles to go, man. The gloves come off. Play hard. Well, while this group is going at it, we talked about it a second ago. Denny Hamlin at 11 and Kurt Busch the 78. In fact, Kurt Busch just a few laps ago ran his fastest lap of the race. The thing I noticed about the 78 car, they've made it better, but it's still not just exactly right. Well, that thing gets sideways off the corner every now and then. Well, the reason Brad Keselowski is struggling among that group is he did not pit. Whoa, whoa, five car sideways down in turn two hey, down here. Hey, and around he goes, Casey Kane. Everybody's gonna get by, either high or low. And we're under caution for the sixth time. Kane was eighth and in the middle of that Big battle. There he is on the outside, the blue car. See, the car starts to do a little dive there, like possibly had a tire going down. Had to have maybe a right front or a right rear, but it had that look of a flat tire. Also, Darrell, he got those rear tires, that right side tires, way up in the gray where nobody'd been before. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it looks fine down the right side. The car looked like it just went in there, kind of dipped over on the right front, and then took off up the racetrack. Tires are good, no problem. Yeah, Darrell, that, uh, Mike, that's not the caution that Denny Hamlin or Kurt Busch or Keselowski, especially Hamlin and Busch, because they stayed out as well. Get a better look at this, see what happens here. You see the car goes in, and it just does a little wiggle, gets up the track in that loose stuff, and uh, around it goes. Pit road is open, Steve. Juan Pablo Montoya took rights only. Jimmy Johnson also hit pit road, Krista. Carl Edwards did not hit on the last stop. They had to come in for fuel, and they went right side tires only as well. Matt? Danny Hamlin chasing his season's first win. Right side tires on this stop for the 11. Here's the race off pit road. Hamlin will win it. Johnson and Edwards side by side, Montoya and Bush. And what makes this pit stop so interesting? We're just right there at that fuel window. I can just barely make it. Casey Kane brings out caution flag number six. Ready for the restart. Joey Logano got the free pass. He's finally back on the lead lap after three consecutive Dover Nationwide wins, including yesterday. Front row cars do not have new tires. Kurt Busch's tires are 40 laps old. Jeff Gordon's are 20 laps old. Gordon does not get a good drive off into turn number one. And Kurt Busch is going to get inhaled by Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson in that 48 changed right side tires right there. 
But Kurt Busch, if anybody's not going to just roll over, it'll be Kurt Busch in that 78. Yeah, it, if he had no tires, you're not going to just drive by him. I can tell you that. I'm talking about no tires even on the car. What a job Kurt Busch has done these last few weeks for a little furniture row racing. And when Pablo Montoya had a great restart, he is now third. Jeff Gordon recovers for fourth. Harvick is fifth. Hamlin is sixth. Then Boyer and Kyle Busch. Steve. Mike, I heard Zach can now tell Jimmy Dutton before the restart, you are a lap and a half to the good on your fuel. And you know what, guys? This might be a good time. No pressure much from behind right now. Maybe ride right here, Larry. Save a little fuel. Get a little cushion. Well, we know Kurt Busch in that 78. He has to pin as well as Jeff Gordon in the 24 back there in four. So now 16 lead lap cars. For 12th, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Ricky Stenhouse in the 17, and Tony Stewart, who may be en route to his best over finish in some time. Here comes Mark Martin, Martin yep. looking under uh, Stenhouse here. Another solid run by Mark Martin at Dover. And I think with these three quick cautions, we had such different agendas as Jimmy Johnson in that 48. He's just going to turn it to the bottom. And Johnson retakes the lead. In all seven of Jimmy Johnson's Dover victories, he's led at least 134 laps. He's led 91 so far today. Mark Martin coming with Stenhouse against Carl Edwards. That's 13th place. Just, but listen to those engines. I mean, these things are, it amazes me every week how many RPM they turn and not have any more problems than we do. Kurt Busch keeping close tabs on the race leader, Jimmy Johnson, and Montoya closing in on the two leaders. Well, Jamie McMurray is yeah, he's one. There's something wrong with him, Larry. He's off the pace. Yeah, he just continues to lose spots. I think I see a little smoke. He's been up, up in the top ten all day long, Crystal. Yeah, Jamie McMurray just coming on the radio saying it's a flat tire. He liked to have not got that thing turned and it just locked him up. I hope he wasn't too fast in that first segment because he was coming in a hurry. He will likely lose two laps on pit road, making the change. Got, it, it got, the got some water or something coming out of the front corner, right front corner there, too. Tough break for McMurray, who's run well all day and was ninth when he fell off pace. I wonder, Larry, if there's fluid coming out of the car and it made him think a tire was flat. Same thing happened to him at the Coca-Cola 600 as we got the battle for second with Montoya in the 42, drives by Kurt Busch in that 78. Beck McMurray had a top 10 run going there. Oh, oh yeah. he got him. <laughs> not quite ready for you to drive by me just yet. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, buddy. Bump and run by Kurt Busch on Juan Pablo Montoya. And that brought Jeff Gordon in that 24 right into the mix. And that was a, a little give and take there between those two. Here was the first one. As Montoya closed in on Bush, four second spot. That was just a nudge compared to this. Well, this is a nudge. It's just a little harder nudge. And it's on that left rear corner, which gets the car just a little loose and shoots it up the track. Nice job of hanging on to it by uh, Juan Pablo. There are two more mercurial personalities in the garage than the drivers of that 78 and the 42. So we'll have to see if this one boils over before the race is done. In both of them with long winless streaks. Jamie McMurray turns into the garage. Chris Devota. Yeah, Jamie coming on the radio apologizing to his crew. He definitely felt something was wrong with his race car. He thought it was a flat tire or a tire rub. They came in. He then said possibly oil, but it was a radiator. A broken radiator is what's sending him to the garage. Last week, top 10 run going. Charlotte, holy gosh. It's always something. They're rushing to get the hood up and see if they can get McMurray back into the race with 67 laps remaining. Kurt Busch has been able to drive away from Montoya by about six-tenths of a second. 
which is probably a good thing. <laughs> I think I think I know why he does not want that 42 car back on his back bumper again. Now, Kurt Busch in this 78 car, by my calculations, he has not been on pit road since lap 280. In about 20 laps, he'll have to make his green flag pit stop. So for Bush, it's a two-stop race right now. No, when he, he makes that stop roughly around lap 355, he'll be good to go. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the, the two drivers we know that will have to stop is Kurt Busch in the 78 and Jeff Gordon in that 24, but Jeff can go probably another 20 laps further than what Kurt Busch can go. Jeff Gordon currently fourth, 2.7 seconds. Back of Jimmy Johnson. Here are the last pit stops by the top five drivers. We feel like everyone except Kurt Busch and except Jeff Gordon, you heard Steve Burns give a report on Jimmy Johnson, that all the other drivers, possibly with those caution laps after they pitted, they can go to the end here now with 64 laps to go. Yeah, I think Johnson, though, he can back the pace down a little bit. He's not pressured at all, and he should be able to increase his fuel mileage pretty, pretty good to where he can make it with no problem. Out of the race early were Scott Riggs, Michael McDowell, and Mike Bliss. Matt Kenseth lost an engine, so did Travis Quapel and Ryan Truex. David Gilliland, Ryan Newman crashed together, and they're also in the garage. 62 laps to go in Dover. Welcome back to Dover International Speedway. 57 laps to go. Jimmy Johnson with a 1.1 second lead over Kurt Busch, Juan Montoya. Jeff Gordon and Kevin Harvick are the top five. 15 lead lap cars with 56 laps to go. Michael Waltrip. Made the move that's got him the lead. Guys, the, the Jimmy Johnson team has put him in a position to win this race. He's driving away from them. We've seen Kurt Busch stay out on the older tires along with Jeff Gordon and be able to hang right there with Jimmy. How does a crew chief decide to win this race. You can't just get four tires like Jimmy does. You better do something different. Daryl, Larry, do you think two tires will work if oh. there's a caution that comes out? I don't think there's any question about it. He'll have the problem he's gonna have though that Kurt Bush is gonna have, he's gonna have to sit there in the pit box a pretty good while taking on fuel. Uh, he's going to need a, fuel lo a full load, right, Larry? Well, he'll, he'll have to have a little over one can, so he's gonna be there for a little bit. I, it's going to be a fine line, I think, with Kurt Busch in the 78 and Jeff Ford making a green flag stop. Whether they're going to go with two or four, I think I would probably go with four because, as you said, Darryl, you're going to be there longer than one can of fuel. That way, if you get a caution, it's built you a little bit of cushion. Well, we listened in on the third place team of the one Pablo Montoya, who was last in at lap 318. 78.24 can get to the end here to see what you gotta do. Nice and smooth. Montoya's best finish on an oval in the Sprint Cup Series. Second, three times. I just think back to Richmond. He was sitting in there. I th we, we, we knew he had Richmond one. No way. And a caution, a green-white checker. Tires. Now you see Juan Pablo Montoya there up in the third position. We've got this battle between Greg Biffle and Jeff Burton in the 31. This is a battle for 16th. But if you go back to the start of the race, and I know two of the Toyota drivers are in the garage area with blown engines, Kenseth and Truex. Right now, the highest running Toyota driver is sixth. We've had a turning of the tide. All Chevrolet drivers in the top five right now here with 50 laps to go. That's right, the first Toyota is Hamlin right there in sixth, ahead of Kyle Busch and Clint Boyer. The first Ford in the race is Keselowski in ninth. Matt? And Mike, the past two runs, Denny Hamlin has complained about his car is hitting the splitter early in the run. Now I talked to Gary and Grubb and he told me that they are right on the mark as far as making it on fuel. He did tell Denny as far as the insurance policy when he enters the corner to try to breathe out of the throttle as much as possible before jumping back in the gas on exit. Yeah, they go back to the September race. Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch both had to pit for fuel with about 10 laps to go. Brad Keselowski ran 89 laps and won the race. 
Yeah, you see all, you, I mean, you hear these engines, you hear, hear how hard they're working, you see how many RPM they're turning. You can back off the throttle a little early, coast the car, float the car off into the corner, and don't jump in the throttle, ease into that throttle nice and gentle. That will save you and that will buy you a lap or two. Back to pit road and Matt. Kevin Harvick trying to score his first win here at Dover. Bill Martin, can you make it on fuel from here? Well, when we started that run right there, we started saving fuel for about the first 12 laps. We're at about 80% throttle, so uh, we were going to be about two laps more. So that will put us about right on the money. But as the laps wind down, we'll probably save a little bit more at the end, but I think we'll make it. If you do get a late caution, do you pit at all? And if you do, do you take two or four? And you know, the biggest thing that these crew chiefs also have to monitor, even though they have this entire race as far as fuel mileage data, is looking at the race pace. Is the pace slower? Is it faster? Certainly makes a difference. And you can hear him say, We're, we backed it down about 80%. I think that's what Jimmy Johnson did there early in the, after that to restart behind Kurt Busch. I think he rode there for about five or six, seven laps, bought him a little fuel mileage. So he'd have a little cushion at the end. And thanks to Gil Martin and Matt, we know how hard it is to hear down there inside the concrete canyons. Keslowski ninth, Earnhardt 10th. Ford Chevy battle. The uh, two Roush Fenway cars just changed spots. Stenhouse passing Edwards for 13th. Yeah, Brad Keslowski in that two, the only Ford driver in the top dozen. A good example as we talked at the top of the show is of the different grooves and the choices drivers have on every lap as to where on this racetrack to get the most out of the race car. It's a shame that uh, Kurt Busch is going to have to pit here pretty soon, Larry, because he's actually closed back up on Jimmy Johnson considerably, making a nice run at him here just before time for him to make his green flag stop. Well, I suppose, Daryl, if you thought you couldn't beat Jimmy Johnson by doing the same strategy, You'd have to go contrary to have a chance at it. And that seems to be what Kurt Busch and Todd Parrott have done. 77 laps since Kurt Busch has been to pit road. 43 laps to go. Like Fox Fantasy Auto Racing presented by Ford. Pick your team of five drivers each week and compete for prizes all season long. Sign up today at foxsports.com slash fantasy and pick your winning team. You saw Kevin Harvick drop out of the top five. He slid back to eighth as Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch, and Clint Boyer went past. Chasing the front four of Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch, and Pablo Montoya, and Jeff Gordon. And on to pit road comes Kurt Busch. 82 laps since he's been to pit road. That contrary strategy didn't quite make it. Steve. Kurt Busch says, give me a little bit more air pressure in my tires so I can make a run at him. Right side tires going on. Four tire change for Kurt Busch here late in the going. If he's going to try and run down, Jimmy Johnson. Well, you let the air pressure way down for the long run. Kurt knows he doesn't have a long run. He only has about a half of a run here with roughly 35 laps to go. The car will come in quicker with the air pressure pumped up. Yeah, you can't wait on those tires to build up pressure. You got to go when you hit the track. Kyle Busch now chasing Hamlin for fourth. Ryan Newman made a slow lap after coming back out from the garage. He'll make one more on the apron and come in. Uh, also, Jamie McMurray has a new radiator, and he's back out on track 19 laps down. So 14 lead lap cars to settle this now that Kurt Busch has had to make his pit stop. Well, Kurt Busch in the 78 made his. We know Jeff Gordon in that 24 car right there that's running third. He's probably going to have to come here in about 12 to 15 laps himself. We anticipate that pretty much everyone else can make it. We know it's borderline, just like Gil Martin told us about his 29 car with Kevin Harvick. And these stops are due to choices made on the last two caution flags. Two cautions ago, Bush did not pit. One caution ago, Jeff Gordon decided to stay out from track position. 
Yeah, what Jeff Gordon would love is a caution in the next eight to ten laps because <laughs> I'm sure we're, if we have that caution, a little bit like Gil Martin told him again, we're going to see a lot of two-tire stuff. Yeah, and uh, Kurt Busch does not want to see that. Watch for Kurt Busch on fresh tires to slice and dice his way through the field. Well, he's going to take no mercy right now because right he's one lap down showing in the 18th position. He needs to get by Casey Mears, Greg Biffle, and Jeff Burton to be that first driver one lap down should the caution come out to get back on the lead lap. Yeah, they're, uh, let's see, where are they? They're pretty far ahead Here's of Jeff Burton yeah, at the so start-finish line now while Kurt Busch is entering turn three. Long way to go. It is. 32 laps to go. The FedEx 400. Clint Boyer has made some nice gains. Uh, he's up to sixth place, Krista. Yeah, started 15, working on trying to get a top five. I asked him earlier today, I said, do drivers like short runs compared to long runs? He said, I've got a tension problem, so I love the short runs. But his crew chief, Brian Patty, said what makes Clint so good here is that he takes care of his rear tires, and that's what he's done all day. You do that with that throttle pedal, don't you, D.W.? Yeah, and, and, and being an old dirt tracker, you know, raced a lot of dirt races. That's a feel that you get used to, and it's something that you can really adjust your driving style. Works out perfect on a track like this one today. See how he rolls the corner, just coast, 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 coast. Easy, easy, easy. And then gas it. Gets up on this straightaway. That's how you keep them buzzing, those rear tires. Listen how early he's out of the throttle. Way, way early. 100 RPM. With 29 to go, Jimmy Johnson's lead over one Pablo Montoya is increasing. 3.2 seconds. And there's Clint Boyer working with Denny Hamlin. But you just place. you just watch Clint in his car. He 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 really he finesses his car. He doesn't snatch the steering wheel around. He just kind of twinkle tickles it a little bit. There's a nice pass for third place. Jeff Gordon in the 24. He fights back on the bottom, but it looks like Kyle Busch, the 18, will definitely prevail. Again, anticipate Jeff Gordon hitting pit road any lap now. Yeah, it's been 72 laps, Larry, since he last had. Sonoka race fuel and Goodyear tires. Little battles waging all over the place. Trust me, guys, this one you are tired. You've been fighting this thing all day. Want to come in, get four fresh tires and a drink of water. <laughs> Make you feel better. Here comes Kyle on the outside of Montoya. This is for second, third, and fourth. Steve? Cut, cutting the front fans off, that's going to let the front tires gain some air pressure, and that will tighten that car up. I, Cut the fans it, off and quit cooling them. That would make me a little nervous. Uh, we have had no tire issues all day today, but uh, you sure don't want to abuse that right front tire at this point of the day. But we can watch Jimmy. Let's see how much wheel he's putting into this thing. Not a whole lot. That's a quarter of a turn. Got a similar situation with Denny Hamlin, Matt. Oh, car of the wall, turn one. And it is Hamlin who bounces off the wall between turns one and two. Caution flag waves. That, that, that's, I don't know what they did, but that's what I was worried about, that right front tire. I wouldn't want to abuse it. Yeah, all right. I do still have brakes, and the wheel is fairly straight. And this car. This caution's exactly what the doctor ordered for Jeff Gordon in the 24, but not Kurt Busch in that 78. No, Kurt is the fourth car one lap down. Won't help him at all. Watch the 11 of Hamlin off heading, into turn one. Heading down the front here into turn one, and you'll see this car take a hard run up the hill, right front tire down right there. Rod Moore, Denny Hamlin. 
hear that tire. Pop, 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 pop. Clint Boyer's view of this. It'll be the seventh caution flag of the day. It comes out with 23 laps to go. And Jeff Burton will get the free pass. Pit road's open, Steve. Jimmy Johnson said his car was very loose when the caution came out, so they're putting right side tires on the 48. Also, Jeff Gordon in the 24 will get right side tires. Kyle, Kyle Busch asking for a couple of things, ice, water, and his car to be freed up just a little bit. For the first time all day, they're going to make that adjustment with Wedge. Matt? Kevin Harvick slides to a stop. Remember, we talked to Gil Martin earlier. He said if they got a later caution, they would go four tires. Exactly the game plan for Kevin Harvick in the 2019. Harvick said the car was free on that last run. Montoya off pit road quickly with two. Now look right here. This will tell you how many tires they change right there. As you can see, the top five were the right side only. That was a winning move yesterday. And that was Boy, a winning move a week ago. Then Johnson, second off pit road. And Chad Knauss wanted his driver to have lane choice for the restart. For Denny Hamlin, this will hurt his chances to make the chase. He came in here 53 points out of the top 20. Needed to get into the top 20 in points, plus a couple of wins in order to have a shot uh, at making the chase, which is the top 10 in points plus the next two drivers by the time we leave Richmond who are in the top 20 in points and also have the most wins out of those 10 drivers. He's in a tough spot. I mean, you know, he needs points to get in the top 20. He needs wins to be able to make the chase. He's in a tough spot. Seen a little bit of everything here at Dover today. A couple of blown engines among top contenders. Now a right front tire that has sent pole sitter Denny Hamlin into the wall. And it's going to come down to a short track style shootout on a high bank one mile concrete speedway. Bunch of contenders that have been up front all day. There's Montoya looking for his first ever Sprint Cup oval track win. He's won a couple of times on road courses. Trying to seal the deal here on the oval as we thought he had at Richmond when he was leading at the last caution flag and ended up in the wrong place on the outside. Sixth on the restart. Couldn't make it happen. But now. He's in position. Yeah, and I think that's why Chad Knauss was so upset. Montoya is not an easy guy to get by. No. And if he races Jimmy pretty hard, that's going to draw everybody else into the picture. And you get Jimmy in traffic, it could be a whole different ball game. And even though we're going to have about 18 or 20 laps to go, the move that this these drivers make on this restart, that could absolutely determine the outcome of this it's race. It's going to be very aggressive all the way back through the field. A lot of positions in play. We expect no less. So. It'll be our sprint 20 to go. With one Pablo Montoya in the lead, seven caution flags, 31 laps, 10 leaders. One Pablo Montoya, 98 races since his last Sprint Cup win at Watkins Glen in 2010. Jimmy Johnson, seven time winner at Dover with 20 laps to go. There's his progression on the graph today. He has led. In the late stages, Clint Boyer started 15th and ran right around 15th all day long. And suddenly, look at how his graph has shot skyward as he's worked his way up into third place. That's our sprint 20 to go as we get ready for what could be the final restart. Coming on lap 381 as everybody lines up for a wave around. And we will have 17 lead lap cars, 18 now in a shootout. Yeah, don't forget, Kurt Busch is back here in 17th. He's going to be somebody to keep an eye on, working his way, trying to get through this traffic, get back to the front. Don't even remotely rule out that we are finished with cautions either. Oh, not I, with these hungry hounds. I, that would be very optimistic. Johnson gets going. Montoya does not. They come to green. The field stacks up behind Montoya. Then separates and they're off to turn one. Yeah, Juan Montoya just did not even remotely get going. Logano way on the outside, three wide as he's done on the last two restarts to good advantage with that 22. Yeah, wasn't that many laps to go? Joy Logano in the 22 is two laps down. 
Done a nice job. One here yesterday, fought back today. Very nice job by the 22 bunch. Jimmy Johnson jumped the restart. Well, it was... Up the gas now, Scott. Give me a slug. I checked up to give him a spot back, but he blew it so bad. Arguing the call. I, I, I don't totally disagree. I, I mean, he did. He took off, but uh, Montoya didn't go at all. We saw this, uh, what, a couple of years ago at Richmond with Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart. Guys, look at that black car behind Jimmy Johnson at 48, and look at this battle right here. This would be a battle for back in about the fourth position. You see the black flag that they are waving on Jimmy Johnson in the 48. Yeah, he's got to come to pit road. He's got to do it in the next lap. Kyle way up high, gathers it back in at turn two behind the leaders and scoots off from Clint Boyer. And here comes Johnson to serve the penalty. Whether or not Juan Montoya spun the pet tires on the outside on this restart. That was the beginning of the restart box right there. You see those two lines on the inside? That's the restart box. Yeah, he was well inside the box. No question about that. All right, here's the, there's the restart box right there. That's where the leader restarts the race. NASCAR's but, rule, if you beat the leader to the yeah. line, you've got to give it back. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem. Jimmy Johnson was not the leader. Right, exactly. If he if he had checked up and let Montoya get back up there or pass him and then passed him back, he had been fine, but he kept going. And what he was claiming, he tried to give it back, and Montoya wouldn't take it. But regardless, there's a penalty now with 14 laps to go. Look who's leading the race, Montoya in the 42. Look, and look who's running second, I Tony cannot, Stewart in the 14. I cannot believe it. Where did he come from? <laughs> and, and Jeff Gordon's right back here, and so is a Keselowski. I mean, this is a whole new group of guys at the front of the field, with the exception of the 18 and Kyle Busch. Jeff Gordon to third as Bush climbs the hill. And behind Kyle, Brad Keselowski, who told me yesterday, we've got a fifth to tenth place car. I think that's where we'll be most of the day, and he's been right. But let's keep an eye on Tony Stewart in that 14 car because he beat Montoya by a tenth that last lap. Got 12 laps to go. Just beat him by a little bit that time, but it looks like he's going through the middle of the corner a little better than Montoya. Tony Stewart has raced here in all three of NASCAR's National Touring Series and in IndyCar on the Dover Mile. He's closing, Larry. Tony Stewart has uh, cut a little bit more off of that lead. A Let's go bunch, back. two tenths. Let's go back and have another look at the restart from Jimmy Johnson's view. There's that restart line on the inside that they're coming up to. Uh, right there, it's marked there, and it's marked it's, on it's the It's marked outside. here, it's on the outside too, inside and outside. And it what? is Montoya's option to start anywhere in that zone. But if he doesn't go, once they get through the restart box, the flagman starts the race. And it becomes a ball and strike call by NASCAR yeah. as to whether the restart was fair or not. And they judged that Jimmy Johnson jumped it, and the 48 did a drive-through penalty. And now Johnson is 17, one lap down with 10 to go. I know we've been focused on Montoya in that 42 and Stewart in that 14, but Jeff Gordon back there in that 24 car, he's chipping away about a tenth a lap here with nine to go. Tony Stewart's going to get, he's going to catch Montoya. I mean, he's closing that gap that time by another tenth. Tony's going to get there. This is incredible because in the last five races here, the best finish by either of these front two drivers has been 14th. And we're closing in on the one year anniversary of Tony Stewart's last win at Daytona last July. Stewart's there. Look at that. He just halved Montoya's lead in turns one and two. Yeah, he can get through the Tony's running a little bit lower and back in the gas a little bit quicker. Watch this center of the corner right here. This is where he really gains. There's Steve Addington who has gone to victory lane here with Kyle Busch in the past. Really gaining. You guys love Tony Stewart down there on my grid walk. He had his beard coming in. He was all grumpy about the questions I was asking him. He was focused. He was ready for this battle. And he's going to have a chance to win the race here late in the goal. And this is good stuff, guys. This is incredible.
Six to go this time. Stewart's there about a car lane. I know one thing. It, it might be all right. I, you can catch him, but I was just going to say, you're not going to drive under him. I think you're going to have to go around him on the outside if you pass him. And company's coming. Jeff Gordon comes into play. Yeah, Gordon, I think Gordon ain't going to have time. If he gets there, he could only get one of them. He can't get both of them unless they do something to each other. Five laps to go. Montoya, open wheel specialist, Indy 500 winner, Formula One racer who left Formula One for NASCAR. He's won twice on the road course, again trying for his first win on the oval, and he's within four and a half laps. And, and he's using every bit of the skill he has right now to drive that car as fast as it'll go and keep Tony Stewart back there, but here comes Smoke. Yes, what's that? Darrell, I believe Tony Stewart's a little better. Three and four than Montoya, but I think Montoya gets it back down in one and two where they're at right now. But Stewart really nails the throttle there, pulls right up there on his bump. What I see is Montoya drives in a little too hard. I think he's no smokes back there. He drives in a little too hard, shoves up in the middle of the corner. That time he held the car down. That time he maintained his line. By keeping the car low. So Stewart, he's going to make Stewart go around him on the outside if Tony can. Gonna Three to go. It's going to be a battle right here. Got to get back to the gas. Got to go. Here That's comes traffic smoke. Ahead. Here he comes. He's out there. He's got him this time. Even into three. Jeff Gordon looking on. And Stewart, the lead up high. Montoya comes battling back on the bottom. Two laps to go. That's two of the best open wheel drivers. And, and, the there. and they're going at it here at the Magic Mile. Don't forget Jeff Gordon cuts his teeth in open wheel race cars and Whoa. he is right up to the back bumper of Montoya. Yeah, Montoya really got loose off two that time. Yeah, he got a great run and he's gonna pull to the bottom. They'll be coming to the white flag this time. One lap to go in a thriller at Dover, Delaware. Montoya, did. Uh, he drove that thing up all four even though it was sideways. And don't look now, that 18 car slipping in the picture. Might get around Jeff Gordon if he's not careful. Tony Stewart will come up on Timmy Hill in the back straightaway, looking for his 48th career win. Hill stays high, and the driver who started the weekend saying, this is our worst track, is going to victory lane in Dover. Tony Stewart wins the FedEx 400 benefiting autism speed. <laughs> Smoke of the day. <laughs> Way to go, guys. Very proud of everybody on your free feet. Thank you guys back in the shop, too. Second win here for Steve Addington, the crew chief. And I'm happy for Steve Addington. They have been ready to tar and feather him and Greg Zepinelli. Said this week, we have not been giving this team the tools they need to even get a top five, much less win a race. What a day. That's a great day. Look, that's all of Stuart Haas. They are pumped up. races since Tony Stewart's last Sprint Cup win and as he gets his third checkered flag at Dover and becomes the eighth different Sprint Cup Series winner of 2013. Mike, he's not even come close to a top five finish this year. <laughs> not even close, and he's going to victory circle. It's actually the third win here for crew chief Steve Attic. And I'm pretty sure he's pumped up about it, too. Pepsi Max presents the Max move. Boy, this was unexpected. Jimmy Johnson gets out of the restart zone way ahead of one Pablo Montoya. And Johnson has to pay the price with the penalty. What a, here's this gutsy pass on the outside of Montoya. Tony Stewart makes the max move and it's going to take him to victory lane. You know, it was a smart move on Montoya's part too. He could have tried to block Tony which I wouldn't have done, but uh, he could have tried, but uh, that was a nice move on his part as well. In our NASCAR on Fox season, we've had some of the most unpredictable, unexpected incidents, unpredictable races, and thrilling finishes. Wow, today is another one. <laughs> Glad you're with us for the post-race show here in Dover, Delaware. And there's your podium finish. You're going to have seven championships combined with those group, including a Grand Prix of Monaco and Indy 500 winner. But Tony Stewart holds off Juan Pablo Montoya, two of the world's best drivers, to win. Tony only led three laps.
in this 400 mile race. Well, let's check in with Steve Burns, who's with the runner up. Steve. Hey, Chris, Juan Pablo Montoya shaking hands with all the guys on the team. It was a great battle. Uh, tell us about the end there with Tony Stewart. Hey, he was way quicker. I don't understand where he came from. He wasn't that good all day. And, and it was good when he mattered. Our car, that last run, it was a little tight the first few laps, and I thought we are going to be good. And then started losing the rear really quick. I never had any speed. It seemed like, it's like you normally have like 10 or 15 laps where you can really mat the gas. And, and I, I was completely on top of the track. I think our left tires were way too old. Uh, but, you know, everybody in the Energizer car this week did a really good job. And, you know, I think that wins coming. It's just, it's good to be running this good every week. Thank you very much, Juan. Back to Chris. All right, thank you, Steve. When the weather warms up, Tony Stewart gets hot. And in victory lane, ready to celebrate his first win of the year, comes in the 13th race. And the 11th time in his career that the victory has come, we say, this late. He, in Las Vegas, a betting choice, he was a 35 to 1 long shot. It's rare to call Tony Stewart a long shot. One of the greatest drivers in the world, though, Chris. So when it comes time to get it done, he was ready today. And he came in needing a win to get into that top 20 in points. Those victories will go a long way in the chase. To get in the chase for the Sprint Cup Championship, his crew is ready to celebrate. So is Matt Yoko. Chris on the cool down lap at Charlotte. Coach Tony Stewart told his guys, don't give up. We will figure this thing out. And Tony, with the challenges from this year, does it make this one even more memorable for you and this entire organization? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's a, uh, man, it's been such a tough year. And, uh, you know, we had not new partners to us uh, at Stewart House Racing, but new partners on the 14 car with Code 3 and Associates this week. And, uh, with all the tragedies in Oklahoma to, to be able to showcase a great partner like that that's done so much to help so many people. It's, uh, you know, them and Mobile One and Bass Pro Shops, Johnny Morris, uh, Rusty Rush and everybody at Ruck, Rush Truck Centers, uh, Coca-Cola, Sprint, just, and most of all, all of our fans up there, it's, uh, we've let them down for a long time. Hopefully today we'll start building that momentum back now. A good barometer for where this team is headed because you haven't won here at Dover since you swept both races in 2000. Yeah, it's been a while, but uh, I, you know, honestly, we we tested here, which I thought would be an advantage coming here, and then yesterday we were we took two steps backwards. It seemed like, and uh, yesterday didn't seem like we were much better. But I'm so proud of Steve Addington and uh, Greg Zipidelli and and. Uh, Matt Borland, Tony Gibson, all of our guys, all of our engineers, they, uh, they worked hard late in the night last night and never gave up. They kept working today, and, uh, you know, Addington's pit strategy gave us the opportunity there at the end. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. He says, how many times you get to outrace Juan Montoya? He's, uh, you know, he, he figured out where I was gaining ground, and he made the adjustment and got going there, and so we had to, we had to move around again. So I uh, found a little something on the top there, but uh, just uh, – you know, everybody at Chevrolet, they've been helping us doing everything they can to help out. And uh, most of all, Rick Hendrick and everybody at, at Hendrick Motorsports, the uh, engine department, the chassis department, Doug Ducart, um, just everybody is really dug deep to, to help us get back where we are today. A group effort, first top five finish of 2013, and it's a win, Krista. And those three names battling each other, Stewart, Montoya, and this guy, Gordon. What a list. And you were wondering, I know for a while, whether the caution gods would smile on you there at the end. Yeah, we needed some things to go our way, and that's, you know, something that's been hit or miss for us this year. And uh, finally, things went our way. Uh, you know, we made a call to stay out, which obviously paid off and gave us some good track position. The car drove pretty good up front there. And, and then we needed a caution, and, you know, you hate to see uh, what happened to Denny. I think it was Denny. Uh, happened, but uh, it certainly paid off for us. So, um, you know, then, then we had a, a car there with four tires that really took off. You know, they pumped the air pressure up on them and it took off. I was able to get by Kyle, but it started getting pretty loose on me as I caught those other two. And all I could do was watch at that point. So, uh, you know, we almost got Montoya on the last lap, but uh, almost cost us another position, too. So great top three. Don't forget to get your AARP rewards car from Chase. Uh, it's pretty cool having a unique paint scheme this weekend and a local company uh, here from, from Wilmington that uh, supports such a great cause with the drive-in hunger. And Kyle Bush walked by and jokingly said, is that all you've got, Steve Burns? Well, Krista, back here in the garage with a disappointed Jimmy Johnson. And, uh, Jimmy, we're going to let you see the restart. D did you think you jumped it? No, I was half throttle for the whole front stretch. And at some point, you know, I, I got to go. And in this situation, NASCAR has the judgment to decide if you jump the start or not. But 
Um, I like he's not even going, so I'm not sure if his car broke or he's off power, spun tires. I don't know. So I'm I'm running half throttle down the front stretch, waiting for him, and and he never comes. So uh, at that point, you know, we got back going. Chad even told me on the radio that that something had happened and and I should just take off and not worry about it. And then we were called on it. So uh, bummer way to lose lose the race. We certainly had the the winning car. Would have loved to have this. Monsters University Chevrolet in victory lane today, but uh, I'll have to come back and do it in the fall. All right, thanks very much, Jimmy. Appreciate your yep. uh, explanation. Chris? Thanks, Steve. Jimmy Johnson starts the year with a Daytona 500 win and almost closed out the Fox portion here in uh, Dover, Delaware with a victory. A controversial call, judgment call. We even heard on the radio he said that he he checked up. Uh, your thoughts on reviewing this, Michael? Well, when you see the other cars, they weren't really bunched up. All the other race cars were, were in line and pulling down the front straightaway. So Jimmy knew that he jumped the start. He has the, uh, the responsibility to give that back. He didn't do that. So I would have to side with NASCAR on that call because it was pretty black and white he was way ahead of the whole field and it wasn't his restart to manage it was Juan's restart to manage and Jimmy took off first so you got to be aware of what the other guy's doing even if you get out in front lay back and then it's up to the other guy as you said Juan to control things yeah and I don't think Juan I don't think Juan was half throttled or anything I think he was going he just Jimmy got such a good start that it took him a little while to catch up and and Jimmy never slowed down to give it back so Jimmy, that's his responsibility Jimmy Johnson a seven-time winner here but never won here in Dover when he was the points leader he's the points leader he'll stay that way but Tony Stewart took advantage of that controversy to win, and we'll have more in a moment.